So Nick. <laughs> <laughs> so Nick, how you feeling, mate? How right. you feeling? Right, uh, fine, mate. Yeah, I don't feel, don't feel too bad, mate. You lying, uh, you lying, you lying, lying <laughs> shit. <laughs> feel like you have disgraced this pod. roadkill. He, <laughs> Nick, went out drinking last night. Missed his last train. Spent 60, 60 quid on a cab. <laughs> not me, not me. Not <laughs> not my friend. Well, that's all right then. <laughs> well, I will have to pay some money back for that. I guess. So what I might do during this episode is cut old clips of you. In they're yeah, so the, so they're sounds, coherent. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> otherwise this is going to be bad. Otherwise, yeah. it's just going to sound out you puking all the time. No, no, no. <laughs> don't do, do not. Don't mention that sick. word. We have a rule about that. Okay. <laughs> Vo- go to the vomitorium. <laughs> Greetings, fellow low lives and liars, misfits and miscreants, and welcome to the dark alley we call the 3T RPG podcast. This is a podcast all about tabletop RPGs, and with me is Nick the Dice Man, a Lambley. <laughs> hello. And James the Chiseler Clark. Oh, hello, everyone. Today, we have all your regular segments like Feed the Back, News Punch, What You Say, and Electro Letters. But in the main subject, we're going to talk about cheating in your mm. RPG games mm. is it right is it wrong well only our lord and saviour Jesus Christ will enlighten us yes <laughs> is it coming on I know you're hungover Nick but to oh. try to speak slightly less gravelled yeah L- okay. no louder no the gravel's oh, okay. fine the okay. ladies will like that okay <laughs> just a little bit more volume but with that let's do some f- James is like my cat out in the room let's do some feedback shall we Ooh. I thought he was leaving the feedback side the feedback side. Yes, bitch, the feedback side. It's the feedback section. Yeah, we take your comments and read them out. Yeah, feedback, bitch. Oh, well, this is the bit where I'm supposed to fade, fade it down anyway. So there we go. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, right, so, I mean, that is definitely a jingle, and this is feedback. Ace B, talking about the actual play. Uh, so we started our uh, DCC mm. RPG actual play, the Coprolite Spear. Yes. And he mm-hmm. says, is the spear made of shot in the original module or is that a 3T special twist? And by shot, he means shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, fucking also correct, got him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what the duck are you talking about, Ace? <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, no, no, so, so we're playing the Lost... No, no, the Isle of Dread. <laughs> We're playing the Isle of Dread, and uh, yeah, um, the the whole thing is about them. They're prisoners, and they've sent, been sent to retrieve a spear made of coprolite, mm-hmm. fossilized dragon dung. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that isn't in the original module. But I wanted to, because you guys are master thieves. Mm-hmm. I thought it'd be nice to do a thing all about stealing a, a prized item. Yeah, a so a poo spear. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it's a I think it's a good twist, Mate, it's brilliant. and I think with these types of twists, we're going to be the best. Yeah, always, we're going to be the very be best. Yeah, but no one ever was. Uh, Lassie, he says, I'm late to the party, but halfway through the new AP, it's very funny. Batman is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's funny is if, if you haven't listened to the AP, that's going to sound really weird. That's isn't true. It? It's that like true. Batman is hilarious. What? He's not funny. He's very grim. Yeah. No, but uh, yeah. So James' character, his nickname is Batman, and uh, <laughs> he's a giant. His real name is Slu. Yes. Um, and and uh, it's funny because uh, yeah, we had another question that came in just because I wanted to address this because somebody asked about Batman's HP because hmm. I said he has a ridiculous amount of hit points because I took the giant stats straight yeah. from the book. Yeah. Right? And it says a d ten. And now the thing about that was is that it's supposed to be eight d ten because they're level eight. Yeah, and they've got ten hit eight hit dice. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, well, that is the exact mistake I made, and I only realised it once. <laughs> somebody messaged in, I was like, "Oh yeah, whoops!" Uh, but we're sticking with it now. He why st- not? He started with forty eight hit yes. points. Yes, why not? Yeah, but to be honest, like I'm not. He's I getting peppered with shit all over. I'm place. absolutely getting like rambunctured mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah, but I mean, if you fight sharks, they see a big snack. Who they're going for? I tell you what, I needed that boy. fucking elf for that. He did. He did, yeah. yeah. Yes. Otherwise, no more AP. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it, yeah. I like the implication that we have to just carry. We can't carry on if you die. Yeah. That's that. He's, he's the lead. James is the lead. He's 100%. the tank. He's the yeah, one that has to absorb tank. everything. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Just, stay, but that's why he needs the HP, and that's why mm-hmm. I did it. I'm pretending it's not a mistake. You see, 
That's how it's all planned. It's all planned. Yes, and uh, obviously we've got one more. Uh, Ace, he, he asked us once again. He's sending all the bloody feedback <laughs> this time. He says, I remember Googling upset tub of jelly to see where it was where it was from, some book. But now the only thing that comes up is your DCC finale. Yeah. Oh, and really? I, that's brilliant. Well, oh, that's such a good idea. We need to put it more on mm. stuff. Just take fra- well-known phrases. Yeah. Like, uh, no, I was going to say something terrible there. Um, so, uh, the uh, upset tub of jelly is something I said in every DCC yeah, actual play. Right. Yeah. And it comes from the book The Eye of Argon, where he says that a noble's belly was jiggling like an upset tub of jelly. Yes, Which mate. I love, because like, te- it's like r slash technically correct, yeah. but it's it just sounds awful. So, yeah, that's where it comes from. But, yeah, I'm so glad that we've overtaken The Eye of Argon. For the upset tub that's of jelly. That's actually owners. amazing. Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? That's going to be what's written on my grave now, isn't it? <laughs> Died like an upset, upset tub, tub of jelly. jelly. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear my my uh, you can hear my like destroyed corpse like sloshing around. <laughs> yeah, you can hear it sounds like. <laughs> 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 but you will not have any of the abilities of a man. <laughs> Oh. I'm sort of secretly hoping that he'll make a uh, return in this actual play. I mean, I'm the one that's right. Well, I was going to say, I just don't, tell I'm us, secretly yeah. think, uh, hoping he'll make a return. Listen, so, I, don't, I don't know. It just, uh, I don't know I, where my mind takes me. The, yeah, the fingers get on the keyboard and magic happens. That's all I know. We don't know. We don't. We're the just conduit. The first you know of it is when we play it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I start making it up on the spot. <laughs> no, it's heavily, heavily scripted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, news. 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 Oh yeah, news punch. Right. Well, uh, it's been this, it's the start of a new year, mm-hmm. and as a result, there isn't much news, right? Because there's nothing bloody going on, right? In fact, when I went to the news sites that I usually steal from. It was slim. I knew it was slim pickings when I saw the site in question had put together an article about different kinds of dust in D and D. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> no, look, I mean it's a good article. Can I? A lot of dust. Can you lot send dust, it, mate? Stardust. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, um, the Chris Cox, and it is spelled exactly how you'd think. Okay. Uh, president of Wizards of the Coast has been promoted to president of Hasbro. Uh, but I'm not sure what? why anyone would give a fuck about that. So uh, that was the biggest mm. news of the last month. Okay. Right. What's his name again? Chris. Cox. Oh my god. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do have one piece of semi RPG related news Good. that I uncovered recently, and it's a long one, right? And I'm sorry about this, but mm-hmm. it consider this to be like a sub main subject. Okay. This is like the like a tumour growing on the real main subject. <laughs> okay. right? Uh, all right, let's do this. All right, so the on. trailer for Rogue of Space has finally aired. Oh shit, it has. Oh, have you guys watched it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. <laughs> I rewatched it again this morning. I watched it last night as well. I was um, like eyebrow raised. So I'll forgive you for not knowing about the Rogue of Space because uh, I'm one of the four people who actually know about it. The other two are in this room and the other one wrote it. So. <laughs> now, a while back, right, I did a, a complete purge on my Facebook account so I could basically just use it as like a Facebook groups app. And I and use it to like schedule our RPG mm-hmm. sessions, right? Now, what's interesting about this is that whenever I see an advert on Facebook, I always click the, you know, no matter what it is, I always click the, uh, I don't want to see this advert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, what this has led to is all of my adverts getting really fucking weird and obscure <laughs> and strange. And sometimes I struggle to figure out what it is I'm supposed to be looking at. Um, and <laughs> I've just shown Nick a picture. So, uh, so one day I'm going onto our RPG group on Facebook and I see an ad for an upcoming book called The Rogue of Space. And it features some of the worst artwork I've ever seen. Not just like a technical failure of artwork, but it has the style of somebody who tried really hard and was well proud of the pictures. So Nick, I just want you to describe this picture that you see below. You can't stop laughing. This was the main picture used to advertise the fucking book. Oh god. <coughs> right, so <coughs> lean into the mic, Nicholas. <laughs> there's a guy there's a guy sailing off into the sunrise. Uh what's he, oh, what's he riding on, mate? Like? <laughs> a horse dragon. A, a sock puppet. I, I have no idea. Sock puppet. <laughs> Look at his legs. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a dude hold on there's a dude watching him go like 
<laughs> What's this guy? Yo, <laughs> there's a guy. There's a guy in a market stall. There's a guy I, in a I, morph I, suit. I, I suspect what he's trying to say is stop, stop that guy. But it looks like he's just <laughs> going hello, <laughs> he's just waving him on as he like runs away. And the quality of the artwork. Uh, <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. It is fucking remarkable. <laughs> What's great is on on the advert as well. He, he does kind of a big like thank you to the person he le- he taught him artwork. Right. And I think he should have he should be very angry at that man. But there you go. <laughs> But just just go and look it up. And actually, the, the sad thing is, if you do try and look it up, uh, you won't find anything because it's that fucking obscure. If you type <laughs> it into Google, but um, I'll give you, I'm going to say the link in a bit. But anyway, mm-hmm. so I clicked the fucking advert after seeing this beautiful <laughs> artwork. Now, it's a novel, but it's going to be released in episodes. So it follows a MWG class space captain called Koran. K- Koran, actually, Koran. That's, that's quite a, a murky waters, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> Um, and it's going to be released in episodes. Now, on the first, our hero crash lands on a planet called Shile and finds himself in a kind of pre-industrial, pre-industrial Roman era planet with breathable atmosphere somehow. And now he needs the services of a blacksmith to repair his spaceship. Think about that for a minute, right? Because bear in mind the planet would it has the equivalent tech at the latest to 475 AD. So how many blacksmiths do you know, you know, that could fix a, a, a negative power coupler on a repulsor lift drive? Well, no. Very <laughs> few. Very few. Mate, there's loads back then. Well, there were. Uh, G- Julius Caesar was a fan of spaceships. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. But he, even his blacksmiths, they struggled. They struggled with the warp, warp drive. They could get it a couple of feet <laughs> off the ground at most. Yeah. The warp drive. <laughs> warp drive. <laughs> <laughs> But so why am I mentioning this at all? And it's because last year we uh, we did the worst fantasy book ever written. And I sincerely think this is a good contender for the worst sci-fi book ever written. I think we should probably do a dramatic reading of it. <laughs> yeah, oh, go on. But I want everyone to go to therogueofspace.com and get the first episode. It's three Canadian dollars. And I want you all to follow the book because I think it's going to be a great source of unintentional comedy. Now, if anything, just watch the trailer, right? Because it's fucked up. Like, <laughs> oh, James, if you want to tell us, <laughs> yeah. uh, t- tell us about the trailer here. So the trailer starts off right, and you think it's really powerful, and it's like it's going to be amazing because they've got they've it's got used good text, they've right? used yeah, iMovie yeah, magic, music. yep, where it has um, like really nice uh, you know templates of text which they've used, and then <laughs> yeah. and it's really good. And then this abysmal artwork, <laughs> which follows exactly what you know we've just seen, <laughs> it's uh, like comes up as well. again and again and again yeah. and again, and it's like oh. it's got all this wicked music in it. But it just looks like dog what shit. What about when the uh, camera pans past someone's face and they're like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, what Nick just did, uh, be glad that this is an audio format. <laughs> yeah. But uh, what made me laugh, right, is uh, like you said, the trailer starts out quite good because obviously he's got, he's got, you know... Uh, yeah. uh, after effects and done That's like it. text and that yeah. or something right mm-hmm. and it's quite impressive but then but when it does that slow pan down of our hero and you see yeah. it and it's like what the fuck is that it's, it's not, insane it's worse than a fucking storyboard picture oh mate but yeah go to the rogue of uh and and you know if anything just watch the trailer right because it's 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 beautiful <laughs> it's it's, brilliant. It's, it's something now you know, i was going to read a bit of the novel out right but its biggest failing really is the plot the dialogue is fucking terrible but it goes on for ages it's like people do really long run-on sentences and paragraphs so i didn't want to read that out but uh, the plot is the worst thing and the structure or to be more accurate the complete lack of either <laughs> off, yeah so I'm going to summarise the entire first episode. Come and this is this is a good laugh, right? So Koran goes into a bar and he gets a contract, which he's given instantly and offered a bonus for no other reason. Then he goes, he goes up to bar and he goes, by the way, uh, this contract, I'll have you know I've got skills. To which the contractor replies, skills, eh? Well, how about a bunch of extra money? <laughs> Um, anyway, a big fight happens for no reason outside the bar in the uh, slash space station and his ship goes down on an alien planet. He's then attacked by local law enforcement, who he magically knows are law enforcement, so he escapes riding a sort of horse lizard thing, horse which lizard is what person. was in that artwork. Yep. It's the horse yep. lizard. Yep. Right? Okay, that's what that was. And uh, funnily enough, Koran, uh, he's not a, a very grammatical man, because he calls it a uh, stead instead of a steed. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of his sleep. I'm riding the stead. <laughs> yeah, as he's, as he's like... getting away on his horse lizard fish, um, Koran then magically knows that blacksmiths on this planet can be found in caves for some reason. Okay. He goes what? to the very next cave he can find and finds this cave by following a bird that was looking a bit shifty. And uh, there just happens to be a blacksmith in there called Jay Walu. Hello. <laughs> so apparently Walu sent the bird to find the source of the crash. 
and learn more about it. But when Corin arrives and asks to help, uh, to asks for help, the blacksmith refuses for some reason, claiming to be busy. So apparently, he just wanted to waste somebody's time. <laughs> what the? <laughs> so anyway, despite the fact that earlier Coran mentioned that he'd need bundles of fresh wiring to fix fix his ship, something that Jay Walu definitely doesn't have, he still stays for ages trying to convince him to help. And this whole exchange lasts a whole chapter and ends with the blacksmith just agreeing to help anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, more sci-fi novels just need an argument. I love it. Please yeah. help me. I can't. No, I can't. Ca- no, no, I don't no, know how to no, do no seriously, it. I can't. I don't have any wiring. But you sent the bird out and everything. It made me come in. No, I can't. I know I did, but no. All right, yeah. <laughs> all right, but, but actually, now I think about it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, all right, it turns out I'm not busy at all. I'm just it's sitting in this cave. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, they, they eventually just just agrees that yeah, help him anyway. Yeah, actually, good point. How many blacksmiths are getting much business when you live in a cave? <laughs> if you don't have your own blacksmithery, I don't think I'm going to trust you. If they're hiding in caves and they've got to have no trails to show that they're there, then how the fuck do they yeah get any work at all? As well, smoking knows if he's got the irons going with no ventilation. Man, they're hot boxing the cave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll give him a week top. <laughs> so yeah, it goes in a whole chapter. You he agrees to help anyway, but mm-hmm. Coran has to steal a shipment of unspecified craft goods <laughs> for J- <laughs> just craft goods. Not even ship parts, no. It's like saying food substance. <laughs> yeah, get not some not sh- get some squiggly not eyes and some fucking PVA glue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, mate, uh, can I buy a box of uh, nondescript craft goods? <laughs> it's, you get, it's like pipe cleaners in there, bits of felt. <laughs> Don't forget the pom-poms. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, he, he basically the, the blacksmith wants him to nick it in exchange for him helping. So he goes, nicks a box of generic goods, come back, and uh, Jay Wallou fixes his ship. Now, despite complete disinterest in the project, the blacksmith then refuses any payment for Corin <laughs> okay. because he thought it was an honour to work with him. Wow. What, I'm, why? I don't know. You're just suddenly, they, they're the best of friends. Stuff. Why, it's an honour. He also gives Koran the sword he was working on when he came into his cave for, for some reason. But before, well, there's someone else's sword. Well, exactly. So the very thing he was busy with that he was complaining about, he's now yeah. like, "Hey, I have this." He's like, "John I've, won't want it." I've been working on it for a week and it's due tomorrow. But fuck it, you can have it. Yeah, I haven't been paid yet, and they're going to pay me a handsome Stop amount. But it. and also payment. Nah, don't worry about it, mate. Because I really <laughs> I like know, you, despite like you. nothing. <laughs> anyway, and um, before Koran leaves the planet, while tears well up in his eyes. He says a painful goodbye to the man he's known for three painful hours. Painful what? Did he stand on a D4 or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it's very emotional. Yeah, the- Ow! <laughs> wow, I can see you're really cut up by this uh, us leaving. He's like, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so he, uh, yeah, he's known for three hours. They do a tearful goodbye where they suddenly love each other for no reason. And the bloke didn't even like him to begin with, but whatever. After lifting off and heading back to the bar from the start, Koran bumps into another pilot who, for some reason, loves a battered, crumbly, badly repaired spaceship. So he trades him a brand new one that's better than his for Koran's shitty one. And uh, in the back of the ship, guess what? There just happens to be the very thing the contractor asked for in the beginning. Way. What the fuck, man? I know. Um, and uh, yeah, so then he gets, he goes back to the bar, gets his money, while the contractor congratulates him and even gives him a second bonus money wow, for no reason. Wow, throwing cash around. <laughs> just, uh, <it's laughs> Mate, minted. <laughs> then Koran, sitting at the bar, talks to the barmaid for two pages about indoor farms. <laughs> <clears throat> but somehow they get onto the subject of Koran's recent spat of ridiculous coincidences and it turns out right that the barmaid has a mate who is a giant spider who wants a set of armor to be made for him at which point Koran hints that he's going to back down to the planet that he visited 15 minutes ago to get a (laughs) nice set of armor made for a spider spider. (laughs) oh mate spider he wants some armor wait 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 wait. your mate what spider (laughs) well that's a nickname surely right no no it's got aliens it was actual okay can we please check in we on might episode have... two? Oh, we're definitely checking <laughs> oh, in on episode so two. Good. Now, a, a little interesting fact for you as well is that here, here, actually the book is free on the bloke's website, right. or the first episode, if you download it from his website. Okay. If you buy it from Amazon, it's two nine 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 nine. So I tried to download it from uh, his website, mm-hmm. and uh, I actually just in, in the end had to pay for it because when I downloaded it from his website, there was a blank text file labelled EPUB slash Moby the, the, the ebook formats yeah. oh. but it was dot text and it was blank so that was great 
<laughs> so uh, if you do want to read the you know the finer details, you are going to have to buy nine pages oh, for two ninety nine. Okay. okay. Two, also two ninety nine <laughs> for nine pages. Money. That's outrageous, <laughs> mate. If, imagine if you got so that from the RPG? books you wrote. See, I, <laughs> I was thinking it was RPG related, but no. It's just a story. It's, no, it's not RPG, <laughs> but I think that this. The reason I bring it up is because I think a when when we do a little divergent episode, we can talk about this. Yeah. I also think that we should uh, petition him for us to make the official setting. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> that needs to be a game. Oh, it would be so. The shopkeeper may not want to help originally because he may not know how to help. But if he's persuaded for long enough, he will help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's got, we're gonna have we're gonna have ten pages of persuasion mechanics. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and bonuses. Yeah, bonuses. And also, the entire game is built around coincidentally coming across the very thing you need. Yeah. Oh look, spider armor. <laughs> that's, hey, that's, that's such a coincidence because I've got a mate and you're not going to believe this yeah we don't have spy, spider people on this planet but uh, just have to make one for fun and then, and then suddenly you hear behind you what do you mean you don't have spider people <laughs> how do you think I have that's the uh, spider friend uh, played by Willem Dafoe there <laughs> I still really still really second me that he was working on like someone else's sword for ages and Indian was like you want that <laughs> I mean, it's it is, it is absolutely outrageous. Yeah, mate, he's, take this. He's like, no, I can't. I can't. I'm really busy with a sword. You know what? Actually, I don't give a fuck. Actually, it. <laughs> You're living in a cave, mate. You need a bit of cash. Get, fuck me. Put some lights in there. Brilliant. But yeah, this is. Uh, I think brilliant. we're gonna we're gonna check in with this Please. regularly when the new when the <laughs> yeah, new episode when it come drops. Out. But don't don't be nasty to him. No. However, I, I I want I want it to be covert. Mm-hmm. I don't think we tell him that he's become a meme okay. until he's finished all of them. Because yeah, we, we want him to finish him. Unless right? he's listening <laughs> to this right now, in which case, tell us you're listening and we'll, we'll make the official setting. Thanks. Yeah, we, we, yeah we're working on it now. He's, de- he's definitely not listening because I don't think he could figure out how to download a podcast to be funny. <laughs> he can't upload a text file. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's go into what we've been playing. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! And if one of these! Oi! Yeah? What you slaying? Mm-hmm. 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 We'll have plenty of that. It's like Radio 4. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, actually, the uh, the taxes on uh, sheep ownership are quite different uh, to last year uh, in quite a profound way. Uh, Nick, what do you think about this? Well, I'm glad you asked me that question. So, um, well, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> now we've got a song from the Bee Gees. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're just sung by the host. <laughs> so uh, we've been playing. We've been playing a little indie game. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know if you've heard of it. Little, little one. You little know. one. It's called Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifth so we, edition? No. We've been. Oh yeah, it's fifth edition, haven't? Isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so um, we've been playing Storm King Thunder, which is a uh, which is a module for that, mm-hmm. and. Uh, Nick joined us for an episode as mm-hmm. well, which was awesome. He played a lizard man called <laughs> That was funny, man. But the funny thing is, it was because we played an online uh, episode because we all got given COVID by one of our idiot <laughs> friends. Yeah, fucking Wankstein. Yeah, exactly. And uh, so he ended up with us playing a game online and Nick joined us mm. for a session playing this lizard man. But it's funny because Discord kept on cutting it off when he went because it thought <laughs> yeah, it was, so we couldn't hear him. We thought it was um, like uh, into. Um, he thought it must have been like background noise yeah, or something. It, so yeah. we had to start calling him S. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Say so, hey, S. So we're trying to spit everyone. <laughs> so uh, yeah, where we're at is that there's this. We we were heading to this town called Nightstone where the uh, the town has been fucked up by rocks. Mm-hmm. There, there's nobody there. They've been captured by goblins who were opportunists mm-hmm. after giants apparently started throwing rocks at the bloody town like idiots, right? The yeah. way they were carrying on, somebody was going to get hurt. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then, yeah, so these goblins captured all the people. We rescued them. And then it turns out that, sadly, this sheriff who lives in a town right up north in Icewind Dale, he's like sister had died right Mm -hmm. so we had to go and deliver the news and we did it and we found that this town called Bryn Shader in in Icewind Dale has been under attack by giants as well there's Mm -hmm. rocks everywhere people are bloody annoyed Um, and um, yeah then uh, we we sort of uh, go there deliver the news we find out the town is like under attack by giants essentially one of them they're frost giants and one of them is like clearly the leader so we went a bit fucking mental on the leader, like like it was pretty cool. So 
at the moment we we did do a bit of downtime as well oh we did we did a hefty us. session of downtime it was really it was good. fucking brilliant and because when we got there basically we went to the sheriff and said you my character's a bard right mm-hmm. so whenever i d- the whole world is off stage yeah so it's sort of like when i delivered i was like your sister has perished <laughs> well actually i was like it wasn't it like your wife has perished and he was like i don't have a wife and i'm like uh, her name was um, what was it? What was it? Sneasel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she kept saying Sneasel. We kept getting it wrong. It was like it, I, it was like Sophie, but we kept saying Sneasel by accident. Anyway, I was like, "Your wife has died," and he's like, "I don't have a wife." And then I'm like, "Sneasel," and he's like, "Oh, I have a sister called Sneasel," and I'm like, "She has perished." <laughs> Sorry, but he's like. Then uh, we said, "Look, we're looking for work because actually, what happened was you remember the episode that you played. Yeah. We got a fifty gold reward. Yes, nobody noted it down. Okay. So uh, actually, in yeah. game, what's happened is we've mislaid it and we don't know where oh, it is. Yeah, so, yeah, so we just we money. fucked ourselves. Very good. So we spent ten days traveling to this other town, and when we for get free. there, we're, we're just <laughs> for free. <laughs> when we get there, he, he, they're, they're, we're like, okay, we'll take our reward now. And the sheriff is like, well, you were paid up front, and we were like, shit. Does anyone <laughs> does anyone have the money? <laughs> so then we were like, well, we can't make a ten day journey back without any bloody supplies. So mm-hmm. uh, we're like. Sheriff, do you need any help around there? We're adventurers. Yeah, and, we're and they were a bit under attack at the All time as well. <laughs> yeah, like not by giants, but there was an attack happening. We're like, oh, we can help. Oh, goblins. Employ us. Well, we didn't know. He just said that there was some insurgents right. yeah. attacking. Okay. Trying to get close to the mic, Nick. Sorry. Yes. So, um, yeah, he just said there was some insurgents attacking, and then it was like. Okay, so, um, look, we'll help. And he just said, all right, just hang around, go to this inn up north, and mm. uh, we'll call you when we need you. Okay. So we had our night off. So we... Oh, yeah, we actually, yeah, that was really good. We had a whole night off. Oh, we told you to go to the pub and just have a drink. Yeah, yeah. we did. Yeah, yeah and we nice. did. And also I put on a show, uh, yeah. uh, Otto, who's my giant <coughs> companion, he does the lighting and the, the rigging <laughs> yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Well, they ended up originally hating us because of how we sort of walked in whilst in, and then we were just like walking around like we owned the place. The because impact. we think we're Billy Big Bollocks yeah. Yeah. because yeah, we were there yeah, to yeah, deliver yeah. some like big news right. and we knew it was going to be for a big deal with the city so mm. we were just like yeah show this person we got a meeting with him and they and they frowned upon us but after this uh, performance and stuff like we did such uh, well, Harrison did really good roles yeah. Yeah, yeah. and Ryan's character fucking genius even though he's um, Goliath yeah. he uh, he charged people out the door for the inn One and silver. so we without made, the inn keeper's permission yeah. he just stood out there and just did it <laughs> just, so we just, made I'm now the, the, the keeper of money because I'm using an app but yes. fucking we made so much money nice, from that mate. and it was mental and then yeah, it was really, just like you can, we can almost just splash the cash always at the minute has your guy sussed out life yet or is he sort of oh he's weird as fuck <laughs> so, so James's character Zergarth is a tiefling so he's half demon and he's actually from a different realm yeah so uh, he, do an impression of how he laughs <laughs> Right, so that's worrying. Yeah. I can't tell if he's being hurt or he's finding it funny. <laughs> yeah. The thing was, uh, and, and the later part of this story, he um, he 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 basically fucks up a corpse and does that same noise, <laughs> and everyone's like, "Is he laughing?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was he's funny so as well good. is that um, uh, Zergarth the whole night while the gig was going on and we were making money at the door, he was drinking himself silly, but he was doing it using mage hand. So there was no, it was unseen servant. That was an <laughs> unseen servant. <laughs> no, what was just sort of floating over to his table. And it was funny when he, at one point when the spell ran out, he's like, "How long does that last?" He's like, three hours." And after three hours, there was a bottle halfway to the table, and it just fell <laughs> down. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Uh, it was also. funny. And um, also in one episode, I started and ended a relationship with a lady as well. <laughs> oh mate, oh, uh, we won't go into the details, but it was mental. It was, was a bit mental. It was because it was the last session at my flat. <laughs> Oh, yeah, um, so yeah. we got really, really, really pissed and stuff and yeah. silly. Yeah. Well, so was, that was all role play that session. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to play it like, you know, like in 1920s movies, right? Yeah. And it's not 1920s, like 30s. Right? Yeah. And it's like, no, they would be silent. 50s. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, it would be, um, I was like that, where the woman, like, she became too clingy after we had sex. So he was just like, listen, baby, it's not you, it's me. I can't be tied down to just one chick. I've, the open road calls to me too much. You know. And uh, I'll only break your heart. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah. Oh, yeah, he rolled for it and she bought it. Oh, yeah, that's she the, was that's, just that's like, that's I love the... you. And I'm like, you too, baby, but I just, I just can't. I'll see you around, maybe. <laughs> see you around, maybe when I'm back in town. <laughs> yeah, we'll drive off on a motorbike, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so so at this point, the, the very last episode is we, it was basically one long fight and mm-hmm. uh, we were, we we basically, our, our, our instinct was to go for the leader. So mm-hmm. we did that. 
as soon as she as soon as the attack started what six, type of, it was a frost, frost giant, giant frost but giant, it was yeah. um, a particular type of giant wasn't it because it was, she was massive she was bigger than the other mega giant yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right. yeah and um but they had dogs and we were like Ooh. are they giant dogs and they weren't they were just dire wolves so it's slightly bigger than normal dogs and the um GM described it well. No, actually, we described it to the GM. We we we, it, we kept saying it over and over again, like drunkenly. It was like, um, so like to the giant, it'd be the size of a mouse. And, and he's like, <laughs> he's lead. like, well, to you, it's like a Great Dane. I'm like, yeah, but to the giant, it's like the size of a mouse. <laughs> so um, yeah, we thought we thought that the the main bad guy, and it got a bit fucking rough because mm. what happened was, is as soon as the attack started, I cast. Tash, Tasha's hideous laughter. Ooh. So I basically I tell a really good joke, mm-hmm. and she's now ruffling. She can't stop laughing. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And then I kicked. We all had these NPCs with us, and I kicked mine off the edge, and uh, <laughs> then cast Featherfall on him. He floated down, and just at the last bit where he's floating, he starts <laughs> fucking her up with the two swords. <laughs> yes, mate. Um, we we did some amazing, yeah. amazing moves. Like brilliant. some of it, it was, was mental. Like Sean's character um, blasted Mage Hands up into the air. His mm. NPC that he burning was controlling, hands. sorry, uh, Burning Hands. He he shot his arrows through. The burning hands mm. to then take the it oh, to then to yeah, then nice. take it to the frost giant because yep. obviously they're susceptible to fire mm-hmm. damage. What and was genius was fucking, as well? Oh, man. Was there was um, James nice. has got this? Um, what is it? Spectral swords where yeah. he, get, he gets surrounded in like a whirlwind of swords. Oh, yeah. And he, he just what he did is he sort of went flat up against the wall of the city, and then they were just coming through the wall like. <laughs> nice. what? Yeah, because I was going against one of the hounds that was there. So oh, I was trying mate. to like fuck it up. Did it you was, uh, take him out? The dogs. I'll tell you what, right, so... Those, it, those were the hardest part, honestly. Yeah, the Animals entire thing. Part. So all of our um, all of our attack was against the Frost Giant, the leader, because yep. we thought it's, it's the best thing to do. The other ones are, are too far away, sense, yeah. and it was just happenstance that we were there. Mm. Otherwise, we realised we either would have died completely mm. or we would have taken more than one session. But... Um, right at the end, our GM re- uh, told us that he fucked up and we should have been two levels higher... Oh. For that encounter, oh, wow. so we okay. smashed up something yeah. far above You're, our combat rating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, and okay. we succeeded like amazingly. We, like, it was it was Decent. so satisfying. And um, one of one of my favourite parts was when uh, basically when the giant finally managed to stand up. Mm. Our Goliath was what, the only one that could. And this is bad. And I'm sorry about this, but he could he could reach up. You know, you know, to the right, yep. and so that's oh. where that's where he went for. Let's call yeah. it. And he uses an axe, so you he gave the axe wound an axe wound. Let's put it that way. Oh yeah, he went for you know he went for the delicates to make her weak real quick. Particular, and he it was, was he yeah. was he was covered in it, and he described oh. it as claret mixed with c- crab juice. Wow. I know. <laughs> so that's pleasant. But the reason they were attacking the city was because um, they were after something. I can't remember. They're what after a person. It sounds and then like they a person. Thought that they, like, that where is? Harry Krishna, <laughs> and, yeah. and then we're like, I was standing on a roof when the when the fight kicked off, and I was I, well, just He's us, using his performance voice mm-hmm. to belt it back. Yeah, and I, and I was like, tell us where it is or what the hell it is, and I can like, help you. And they were just like, where is Harry Krishna? And we were like, I was just like, look, please work with me, man. And and they were just like, uh, yeah, they were unresponsive, and then right. they just stormed the city. Yeah, they like, just fuck, like trying to fuck it up. You know, I find quite interesting as well is that I've realised now after our sessions have have developed mm. that no matter what situation we as a party become in, we always want to help whatever that yeah. happens because at the very beginning before the fight happened, mm. you know, Harrison's character, the singing sword, was saying, "We will help you." Mm. Yeah, but that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so at the end, we killed their leader. We fucked her up, and we've intimidated everyone else to stop. And oh. um, like literally, all of the giants have stopped, and they're a bit scared of us, even no, though nice. we're these tiny yeah, creatures yeah. who <laughs> yeah, are exactly. really low level. Yeah. But even at that point, he did an amazing speech again, and was basically like, "Look, we fucked up your leader, but employ us, and GTFO. we'll help you." Right. Yeah, yeah. We literally just like, "Well, we'll, we'll help you." Yeah. And I, yeah. And I was just Ooh. so mad. I was so just like, left then. "Yeah." So we. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, so they're just leaving. Yeah. But um, there was also, I uh, will shut up about this in a minute. But the the uh, yeah, there was one cool move right at the beginning. I did the double arrows and went for a cool shot to the eye. Mm. Scored a crit. So, but two arrows went into the giant's eyes. <laughs> But then the Goliath, who's 10 feet tall, started hanging off them and he was trying to rip the eyes out. Yeah. The GM was like, well, I don't know. I think the arrows would just sort of snap off. And um, Ryan was trying to bargain with the GM. And he's like, no, mate, because imagine, right, you had toothpicks in your eyes and there was a baby hanging from it. <laughs> right out but, there, he said it, but he said it like really seriously. Yeah, he's like, oh, like no, seriously, it's think like a baby on your face. <laughs> Brilliant. That's how I could say yeah, it was good fun. And mm. and we also started our actual play, didn't we? DCC. Fucking yeah. yes, mate. Oh, yeah. 
How, yeah. how are you guys enjoying it so far? Lovely Describe way. the... Oh, we, I guess we went into it a little bit earlier, but mm-hmm. essentially it's, uh, yeah, two bank robbers mm-hmm. that have been sent on an impossible mission to the Isle of Dread to retrieve something so that they can receive a pardon. That's right. And that something is a dragon shit fossil spear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely one of our most wacky of oh, uh, so our funny. actual plays, but it has the DCC feel in it whilst being so. a bit um, silly. Bonkers, well, I wanted yeah. to go for a. Uh, I guess it's a bit more goofy this time. Yeah, yeah. it's like you know a thief and a giant. Yeah, and but it's, good. it's, it's a, a bit it's more like Gonzo classic. as a result, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah precisely. Yeah. I will say this: there was a guy, a guy who left a comment on SoundCloud, but then deleted it. And he's like, "Can you stop saying the word rape so much?" And I was uh, like, I, was sort of like I, "I did notice. I did notice." And uh, it was quite excessive. But here's what he doesn't know, right? What I well, what I was trying to do was trying to make it comically. Uh, like comically over the top, like, no, tre- like sound black, treacherous, but like, like black comedy as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's a bit like, oh, you're going to end up beaten and raped and worse when you go to the Isle of Dread because mm-hmm. it's like, think about the title of it. It's already like trying mm-hmm. to be ridiculous. But here's what they don't know: is that rape baboons. It's not because of that reason. It's because they eat rapeseed oil, ah, which they go. use to fuel their dragon breath. Ah, so yeah. there we go. Yeah. So you're wrong, <laughs> not me. Got it. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of people uh, uh, seem to enjoy it. And I, somebody came onto the Discord and said, "You're definitely getting cancelled for this one." <laughs> I, I, I did, I did think, I did think, like, because well, like, like the tribesmen, mm-hmm. I made great care to say that they had purple skin. So that's not based on anyone in real life, because mm-hmm. nobody has purple skin, do mm-hmm. they? Do no, they? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. And also, if you are taking the piss out of remote tribes, how are they going to know? <laughs> they're, the, they're, the, they're the best target not that we were doing that but if we were <laughs> <laughs> fuck it I always, see, I always see stupid memes online about well it doesn't matter if you upset the Amish they can't see it online can they? <laughs> uh, you say that but I've been watching Return to Amish on oh, TLC recently is that a real thing yeah I mean it's pretty good so I've been watching this one where these two Amish girls uh, leave the Amish community right and uh, want to just become the English as they call it, <laughs> yeah. and it's fucking brilliant I, I, it's just brilliant you should watch it We've I'll got. I've gone on a out. tangent here but uh, there's a bit where they go into the, uh, an airport for the first time and one of them sees an escalator and she goes whoa look at those moving stairs <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's brilliant. But yeah, um, yeah, good point. So maybe that's what our next campaign will be about. We'll take, the Amish. We, we, the we've Amish. done tribes, we'll do the Amish. Next up, Eskimos. But there we go. No one's safe. Oh, yeah, you can't say Eskimo. Actually, they won't know. Gutted. <laughs> no, but seriously. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Well, I'm not sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, I, I don't know, it's just a good laugh in it. I don't, I don't think anyone was actually offended no, by it. It's, it's cartoonish and silly. That's yeah, all it is. Exactly. And um, yeah, this one, because it's not a main actual play, like we're, we're doing this as a filling in one before we get to our next big one. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it's going to be about three episodes long. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think with this one, we can go a bit goofy. Yes, we have different ideas. So. Well, we needed it. Of... Yeah, we wanted it to be a bit more off the Wacky. wall. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I, think, but I, th- I just think the, the adventure itself, it calls for it a bit. Oh, it's mate. called the Isle of Dread. Right, it's you so know what good. I mean? It's, it's so got good. fucking dinosaurs in it. Yeah, you know, yeah. And having olive oil massaged into you. <laughs> oh, mate, <laughs> it's so funny. I could actually, when I re-listened to it back, I could yeah. smell the taste. Oh, like, I, I, I actually got hungry when <laughs> yeah. I was listening to that. <laughs> I thought, I thought it was funny because I, because nobody said anything at the time because. You guys were be obviously being seasoned because the tribe was about to cook you. But nobody said, I think we're about to be cooked. But I just saw the look on your guys' face. That's the one thing I wish they could have seen. Because I saw Nick sort of, at some point, he started to smile wryly. And he was, you were just like, hmm. Yep. Okay. And I'm like, for some reason, he's put paprika on your back. Like, yeah, go, go and listen to it. I don't, we spoiled a couple of things, but I reckon you would enjoy it if you like our other actual yes, plays. It's, it's a good laugh. But that's it for what we've been playing. Shall oh. we do a bloody main subject? Probably should, we... should. Yeah, probably. Probably. What do you guys want to do? Do you want to go for a break now or should yeah. we start this one? Have a quick break. Let's right? do a quick break yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. This is Lee being left in. I'm going to leave it recording while we're gone. That'd be fucked up. What if the ghost <laughs> comes on or something? Main. Subject. Ma- magic. Main. Subject. Tokyo. Main. Subject. Subject. So cheating. Don't do it. Is okay. it good or is it whack? It depends what kind. Because yeah. um, if you're talking about love life, then uh, what, get out. Depends yeah. on the quality of the woman. <laughs> depends, on, <laughs> depends on the quality of the life. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're talking about cheating in RPGs today. We're going to go over the best techniques and mm-hmm. how to do it successfully. And the reason we're doing this is to educate people so that you know how to... 
what to look for and how to stop it. Um, We're going to go into different categories of cheating and how to do it. And then we'll, obviously for each each one, uh, we will, uh, yeah, we'll sort of uh, go over how to, how to look out for it. Mm -hmm. So the first, first uh, one we're going to do is a dice and rolling cheating. Mm Mm-hmm. Weighted dice. Oh, yeah. Now, oh, yes, believe man. it or not, this is actually a problem I have encountered, actually, mm. at, at the table. Mm-hmm. When we had a player named Phil, and he turned up once with some weighted dice, there were two D6s, and he kept on saying, when somebody's rolling damage, he's like, use these ones, use these ones. <laughs> and then I knew, and I picked them up, and I was like, you fucking anus. <laughs> it's what the fuck, man. So oh. you can buy weighted dice Ooh. online, right? And it, But it's very rare to find, you know... The classic RPG polyhedral dice weighted, weighted online. Yeah, that's right. So um, you um, so so, but but essentially, how you can do this is obviously you can buy them online, but you'll probably only get D6s. I have yeah. seen weighted D20s, so just be Ooh. careful. If somebody's using a D20 of a different color, mm-hmm. that's probably yes. Yeah, it's hard to get a full one. set, and and, yeah. and you know us nerds, we tend to use full sets. Yeah. So and most people do. So if if you see one using a different color, you know watch that's probably it. watch it, watch it. But watch the it. Test, isn't there a test or something you can do? With so the test breath? you can do is put them in to uh, heavily salted water. That's it. And spin them, and it will show you uh, if it comes up a different um, number every time. Then you know that that's a fair dice. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and that's another cheating method actually that you can use is try to do that with all of your dice and try and to see, find the yeah, ones that see the, the most favourable ones, uh, and then you can create your own favourable bespoke wowzers. set. Wowzers. Now, weighted dice. The way it works, right, is that <clears throat> typically what people will do is they'll take a set of dice, typically casino dice, obviously, because mm-hmm. they're very light, and they'll drill tiny holes into the pips, Right. Yep. put lead in it, Ooh. then paint over the uh, to the right colour of the pip. Yeah. So that's what people do. And if... You, but that, the, the good thing is, this isn't likely to come up in RPGs because... Obviously, it's very hard to do that with a number. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out. We've got enough sets of dice. Yeah. I You're, reckon I can, I can <clears throat> donate one to uh, science. Defo. Yeah. Cheating. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not really willing to put the effort in. No. <laughs> but but I yeah, probably if, won't. It, it, to look out for odd coloured D6s and D20s. Mm-hmm. That's what that that's a giveaway. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the other one is palming dice just as you roll it you roll it quickly pick them up and go yeah I got six. Oh. now I've seen this happen in board games before mm. you know there mm-hmm. are certain players that will do this and they're usually about five <laughs> uh, or something like this <laughs> but that one's that one's pretty easy to look out for because yeah. often you know everyone's looking at the roller but yeah. make it so that you, it, at your games only roll when the DM asks you for a roll mm-hmm. right Yep. And uh, at the same time, make sure everyone pays attention to other people's roles because then that basically eliminates being able That's to it. palm the yeah. dice very exactly. quickly. The other one is just simply lying. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You yeah. roll, Great you luck. get a you get a seven, and you go, oh, yeah, 17. Yeah, so you just go, oh, yeah, I've got 17. Why? Oh, I've got the bonuses. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, just, just lie. <laughs> All right? Straight out lie. That one's hard to do. Um, but uh, I have I have included a method of doing this in here. Mm-hmm. Have a dice tray with very high walls. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. a GM yeah. screened yeah. dice tray. Yeah, 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 and yeah. one opening that faces you. <laughs> yeah, and then and then just be like you peer into it. Nobody else can see because it's got very high walls. But you're so like right. You're in like right, and you're like oh, it's a seventeen. Can I have a look at that? No, oh, no, 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 you can't. No, you can't. Good excuse though. Um, use, oh, I'm using glow in the dark dice, so you've got to see them in the in pitch black. Yeah, yeah, easy, easy, easy. Yeah. There goes my son. I hope the listeners can't hear that. <laughs> um, but yeah, another uh, dice rolling method is uh, having custom dice made, which costs a lot of money, mm-hmm. but only with high numbers on them. So you have a D20, but all the numbers are 7, 18, 19, <laughs> 20. Oh my God. That's an amazing idea. Oh God. Now the thing is, if you buy that in bulk, costs a lot. it costs a lot of money. Yeah, uh, it costs less money. But but also buying dice that aren't D6s that are customised is very difficult. Mm-hmm. Hey, it's expensive. I've got quotes for it. It's fucking Ooh. mad. It is insane. So, But, you know, if you're a determined cheater, yeah, get the those custom... go to, yeah. Now, don't go mad. Don't put 20s on every side because somebody's <laughs> going to notice. Yeah. But maybe go from the from 15s to 20s. That's it. Then you've got a method on your hands. Yep. Right? I'll leave three 20s on there, all yeah. in different areas, so it doesn't look like it's now, near another one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You've got, to, you've got to be smart about it. Mm. You've got to be smart about it. And luckily, the good people of Chessex will probably be willing, be willing to help you <laughs> for a high price. Or Q's workshop. Yeah. Oh, God, now, this, yeah. Is, this is one of my most hated things, yeah. pre-rolling. 
Oof. Right, so you sit at the table, you roll a couple of times. When a roll comes up that you like, you leave it there. Somebody asks for a roll and you go, oh, yeah, I rolled it a minute ago. Uh, I've got a 17, yeah. right? Yeah, we've seen that in uh, at a convention that we run. Yes, uh, there's a specific <laughs> player that does it all the time. Now, yeah. the, on, on the surface, there's nothing really wrong with it because yeah. all you're doing is rolling and then the, the GM calls for it, you've already done it. But what the reason people do it is because they'll roll until they get a number they want. Yeah. You know, covertly. Yeah. Because sometimes at the table, you're just sitting there rolling dice, just, uh, you know, because you're fidgeting. Yeah. 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 But see, the thing is, what we do at least, and what a regular RPG nerd would do at Mm. the table, you're rolling dice just because you're fidgeting. Mm -hmm. You get a 20, you go, ah, I wasted that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or or you get a one, you go, ah, I'm glad. Or you're trying to see see which one would give you the best luck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, So, yeah, pre rolling is another one. Just look out for it. Even if the player says, I already rolled it, well, no, I didn't say, call yeah. for it. So yeah, say, I didn't, roll it again. Yeah. No, say, oh, cool, I didn't see it. Um, so roll it again. Need it again, please. Right, so, and and that that sort of goes hand in hand with my next one, which is uh, sleight of hand mm-hmm. slash the knock slash misdirection. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what you do is you roll a dice and you go, oh my God, what's that? <laughs> And then you just <laughs> n- get, get, turn it. All you do is you, 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 turning it takes too much time, so you just give it a little tap. Yeah. Because if it's a really low number, like a two or a three, likely it's going to come up on something else. So you roll and go. Ha, you point at the table or, or whatever, and just go. Ha, ha, look at that there. And then you just give it a tap. <laughs> just side swipe. Just little. Get just a fresh a, roll out of it. Like that. Yeah. You get a fresh roll out of it. It's beautiful. <laughs> Now it's just it's go. You've got to pay attention. That's what it mm-hmm. is. Yeah, because that's a pretty easy one to get away with. I would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look. We say that, but if there's more than one player at the table, then it's going to be quite difficult because yeah. not everyone's going to be misled by your misdirection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but here's there, but there's many ways you can employ it. If you look at like magicians, mm. right? What what they the misdirections they do are very complicated. Yeah. So I could just roll, you know, then knock over my drink. The second I see it comes up as a three, I just go, oh fuck. Uh, then you spend five minutes cleaning up. Then your GM, go, GM goes, what did you get? And I'm like, twenty one. Twenty one. Hey, you're rolling a d twenty. Don't worry about it. Shut yeah. up. I this one's got it. special numbers on it. Yeah. yeah. I've been in touch with Chessex. They've done me a little. So it's fine. There's there's another. I don't know if you've got this method of cheating on there, but there's another one with with magnets, and you could strap a magnet to your knee and do it under the. Table. Wow. So you can just like move your leg underneath. So you always roll in one spot, and then if it's not good, you can just move your leg, and then it will continually roll to something better. Wow. That's pretty good. That's but pretty you good. know, have you seen those neodymium magnets? They're really powerful. Ones. Yeah, they're quite big. Yeah. Ah. So you're gonna have to turn up to the game and just say, look, it's all the fashion now to have large metal discs on your knees. <laughs> Yeah. Don't ask questions. That's that's part of the misdirection, right? You and it'd be like, put your phone down. Be like, why is it going for Zaz? What's going on there, mate? Why has all my data been wiped? <laughs> my Oyster card not working. Uh, uh, I, d- I don't know. Um, but yeah, basically, you know, fashion-wise, it is uh, all of my jeans now. I'm going metal discs. Go metal discs, yeah. mate. Yep, yep, yep. So, uh, you know, that one... It's probably going to be hard to get away with, but you could also sew them into your trousers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah or that's true. now, one popular thing is getting magnets implanted under your skin Ooh. to have a sort of sixth sense. Subdermal. Yeah. So, you know, uh, actually, if somebody did that, I'd probably let them cheat. Because that's, so much that's commitment. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's yeah. Good. You've, you've mutilated your body yeah. or trousers. <laughs> you can just picture like a, a body a trousers. Surgeon. So, what would you like to do then? Yes, I'd like magnets inserted into my knees. <laughs> uh, okay. what, why? <laughs> Uh, D&D D&D bro. <laughs> D&D bro. D&D bro. And then he's like, <gasps> you don't say it. He opens a drawer, dice. Oh, in there already. Yeah, and he he's knows. just like, <laughs> See, you oh, can well. test them out. Which strength do you want? Lifts his knee. Yeah, yeah. He's <laughs> like, done it himself. That's part of the uh, operation. You know, we, we have to test it. So uh, if you could please uh, put your knee under this. Magic table. missile. <laughs> <laughs> um, use a similar looking but larger di- Why did I put that? I don't even know what that means. Well, similar looking but larger dice. Yeah. Oh no, no. Yeah, what yeah. it is 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 like let's say for example you're you've got a, a roll that's coming up a D twelve mm. and you own a DCC set. Most people don't know about the weird dice. Yeah, in yeah, a D- yeah. So oh, D fourteen. Get D fourteen mm. out. Oh, there you go. More now, dice. if it does come, but then that's not really a good method of cheating, is it? I don't know why I put that if in. You there. get a crit. It's like what? <laughs> uh, what is that? What'd you get? Fourteen. What? <laughs> uh, well, because it's a plus two bonus. Yeah. Duh. But I guess you could get away with maybe in DCC doing a D7 instead of a D5. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yep. But, then, but then if it comes up higher than a 5... You're fucked. Mm. And you're not really more likely to get... High. All right, forget that one. Right, that's rubbish. <laughs> Don't do that because you won't even get away with it. Mm. Rubbish. Although we had, have had players at the table. You know you do it by accident. Like They've Ryan, got magnets in their Ryan the other day is like, oh yeah, roll a D12. And he rolled it. And he gets a really high number. And then James is there and he goes... 
That's a D20. <laughs> well, no, it's always he rolls a D12 instead of a D20 yeah. or, or yeah. something like That's that. And, and it's, or, or it'd be like, yeah, you rolled a D20 on a D12 damage. <laughs> and he's like, 18. Yeah, and like, oh. Do you see, you know, it's the problem here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so so dice wise, those are basically the main methods of cheating, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's you, You've got lying, you've got palming dice, you've got magnets in the knees. A lo- all of them. Are, uh, are successful but I would say probably the most common one that I see is the pre-rolling one yeah yeah. I I've, I don't think I've ever seen somebody do the knock I have seen people do the palming the dice technique mm-hmm. where they just quickly pick it up oh there is one more which is where you do a faux roll so you looks like you do a roll but what you do is you actually toss just and it slide on, it, it yeah and, especially and if it's a d6 on, it's, it's a lot want. easier to yeah. do if you if you haven't got a felt lined or rubber mm. tray that will actually promote a friction and therefore yeah. a roll if you've got like just a wooden tabletop you can chuck it and then it will slide, slide, slide and it. stay oh, on six. the number you yeah. want yeah that has happened a couple of times be like mate you got to roll better <laughs> well, well remember when we were using the bloody dice tower and we figured out that if you put it on the result you want then sort of gently uh, yeah, gently it down yeah, the that's stairs. so weird. Yeah. You could hear a rolling inside, but it would always come out that number. Oh, that's mental, yeah. So that's a, another that's another quite good technique. Yeah. But, I go. mean, it's probably a complete freak accident mm. of physics that, that, that happened over and over again. Yeah, yeah. so weird. But that's it. Yeah, those are the re- real main dice methods mm. to look out for. You've really got to make make your table one where everyone pays attention to the person's role. Yeah. Because yeah. that way, you could, uh, there's no getting away with yeah, it. Yeah, and it's basically. fun. It's fun watching people's roles. Yes, exactly. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah. And getting really hype about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But now we're on to the next segment, lads. Ooh. Segment. Which Sedment. is... Um, Sediment. Basically, <laughs> uh, stats and game cheats. Um. Now, one thing that people do when they, when they build a D&D character... Mm. Is is they they lie about the roles they got. So when you're rolling three d six, especially during a, a session zero, mm. it's quite easy just to with a, you know when you go roll your um, roll your six scores and note them down mm-hmm. and then put them in what stats you want. Yeah. It's quite easy just to go yeah I got six straight eighteen. So there, nobody mad. was watching, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. but like you, but you've got to be if you want to get away with it, you've got to be quite. Uh, you can't go too mad. No, of course you can't. Yeah, if you get absolute max stats. Well, it's like Ryan's character has unbelievably good yeah. stats. The yeah. only the only reason I know he wasn't cheating is because I had to help him make his character. Cause <laughs> oh he's yeah, a, a bit of a retard. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. If somebody's coming up with no negative scores, you know, that's mm-hmm. a dead fucking giveaway. Yeah, yeah. And also, if they're on the higher end between say fifteen to eighteen. Yep. I mean, I don't think I've ever had a character with an 18 score. No, so it's cool. like, the the yeah, you've got to look out for that. But mm-hmm. if you want to get away with it, don't take the piss. No, that's the, right. This one is a hard, kind of hard one to get around, especially during character creation, because you're not really focused on um, what everyone is doing. Yeah, it's, that's true. It, that's true. You've got your own little bits going on. And the thing is as well, it's like, um, if you did roll really high and you were being honest, then you'd be going crazy. Yes. Whereas someone that didn't probably wouldn't. They'd be like, yeah, yeah. I, just got, I got 18. Yeah, that's you'd be a, going, I can't believe it. Yeah, that's stats. a good point. You'd be, yeah, you would yeah. be amazed. Well, this is, why, um, yeah. this is why. This is why, because I'm aware, mm-hmm. and we, we, sorry, we're aware mm. that in other RPG circles, they're like they expect the player make your character before you and come to the session, to the pre-made character Ooh, because wow. you've made it on your own. Yeah. It's like no, we always, always, always suggest a session zero because you can tie in backstories. Mm-hmm. It is fun. Yes, you're sitting there writing a character or rolling them up, yeah, right? Yeah. But it's fun because then at the very end of it all, mm. you give your intro, you discuss bits and do it. So yep. that's another way to prevent all of that shit happening. Yeah, Just never, do it together. Never Definitely. allow pre pre made. Yeah, never, never. Everyone never. turns up with like mega mega character. Oh, well, that's how that's did like, three of you, you get six straight 18s how <laughs> yeah, is that possible exactly. yeah. well that was like someone um, you know suggesting uh, or JT suggesting mm. that he could um, write some characters that he's already got into it I know he's the GM so yeah. it's not cheating for mm-hmm. that side yeah. but it'd just be like yeah but they're sort of like characters from an arc that never existed yeah. in our yeah, realm yeah he wanted he, the, our current GM wanted to bring over characters from his other group oh okay and I was sort of like no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, just nah, mate. You're right. Yeah, another one, of course. Like, we, you can lie about stats. We're taking the D and D example here, but like, if you're in a, in a game that has build points, mm-hmm. for example, GURP, Savage Worlds, things like this. Yeah, just you could just stick on in, in Savage Worlds, right? With your uh, attributes, you get five points yeah. to spend at character yep. creation, right? You could just knock one of those up, one dice, extra little dice. Hey, drop. don't worry about hey. it. Yeah. Um, my suggestion would be, even if you don't do it for every single character. Check people's sheets. Yeah. Just say, oh, just I'll give everyone's character a once-over before we start the game. Mm-hmm. And you look at it. 
and be scrupulous about at least one of them. Yeah. Usually, yeah, because all you're you... trying to do is make the players think that you're paying very close that's attention. It, that's it. And then people will be well, less inclined well, to just check that because I've got that wrong. Well, well, there, have been, yeah. there have been honest mistakes that oh, yeah, have that have uh, come out because of that. Mm. And Mostly with my, like, oh, yeah, with my brother. A, oh, yeah. You're <laughs> yeah. Like, no, mate, you've already spent too many. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and that, that can happen. And the, the trouble is with GURPS, where you have, you know, hundreds of build points of character Ooh, creation. Yeah. That's, it can too, be very, that's too difficult to keep yeah, up with. Yeah, you're not going to do it. Yeah, you can but something like numbers. ICRPG, mm-hmm. you start with six points to spend. Mm-hmm. That's very easy to add yeah. up. So, so, I mean, t- again, like picking a system that is less prone to being balked yeah, at yeah, character yeah, creation yeah, yeah. Is, is kind of the best way of doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but another thing I have heard happens, I've never seen it happen, is people inflating characters' stats between games. Ooh. So you go home, take your character sheet home, yep. rub out the plus one, just bump up to a plus, a plus two. two. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> is the GM really paying enough attention to the point where no. he's going to know this? Now, well, the, but the way to get around it is to always have copies of their sheets behind your screen, it's which you idea. then update. Because idea. not only does it, it, it you it, it deletes that problem from the equation, mm. it, but also, it helps you GM. It helps it you GM. Don't yeah, it oh, what's your AC? Yeah. What's your um, uh, passive perception or whatever mm-hmm. it is? You know that stuff. Exactly. Because I did that when we played online just to make it easier. Because I knew certain people weren't going to be able to find the the right entries on their sheets quickly. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you, you you just look down and you go, oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah roll this. persuasion. You got a plus two on that yeah, or exactly, whatever. Yeah. yeah. It makes so, it a lot easier. I mean, it's it's very hand holding. But mm-hmm. as 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 players in that format it's fucking great because oh, yeah. you actually don't need to worry about your sheet at all yep. you're just like roll this you have that and then yeah. it's just like you've got a helper that's nice. yeah. 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 you just get to enjoy everything about Especially it if you'd miss your bonus yeah, yeah well, exactly. Like, I've done it before. You know, you forget you got a plus one, and you should have had like a plus two or whatever on something. But I mean, you can yeah, also you can just uh, as well as character creation, just lie in the game. <laughs> just roll his dice. I got plus three on that, and just see if you get away with it. It's the GM. But that again, just have the copy of their yeah, sheets because yeah, yeah. otherwise, but you could just go. I have got plus six. Hang on, maximum is plus three. <laughs> so don't you know? Don't <laughs> no, don't, don't go overdo. too mad. Come don't on, come, oh, come on. on. If you want to be a good cheater, cheat properly. Cheat properly. So you could uh, with that one as well. I suppose you like well, not because of doing that. You did it more, so we didn't like people didn't lose their char sheets. But yes. you can uh, take your char sheets at the end of each episode. Yeah, look get we get them, look after them for your yeah. players. Get, yeah, get, always, that's up. what I do, yeah. and also because you know people are going to leave my yes. home anyway, yeah. so it's like it's Absolutely. the best thing to do. Well, I've yeah. actually I've um, inadvertently had to use my phone because James hasn't given me my char sheet what? for a little while uh-uh. mm. because I've remade my kick, character on my phone because of our online session. Yeah, and then um, it's a useful tool to have because it has mm-hmm. the compendium, mm-hmm. and I like using that. But I do like the physical one, but James but just all, hasn't given it to me yet. But the phone is very rife for cheating as well. Ooh. I trust you, obviously, but yeah. it's like, you know, if I think just outright, mostly, just ban them. Mm-hmm. See, in Cyberpunk, Ren, we we used our phones a lot, but it was mainly for the uh, for the store, the app, the yeah. things. Yeah, but yeah. The um, yeah, like like players who use their characters exclusively on phones, mm-hmm. they're mm-hmm. They, they're probably watch out. yeah, watch, watch out because <laughs> that's a rogue yeah. of space. <laughs> yeah, uh. um, yeah. Uh, another one is to avoid paying for things in game when you're doing shopping, Ooh, right? Yeah, and everyone's yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. at the table is looking at the books and the GM's not really paying attention. Yep. Just say, oh yeah, I bought this, to and they'll go, did out. you take the money out? Yeah, 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 yeah I did. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. To go. And you could do this at character creation as well, mm. because often you want to have oh. a bunch of money to spend, and that's also another time when a GM is very distracted. Again, there's someone who at the table, Sean, who uh, <laughs> who he does it. He literally doesn't do it on purpose. No, but it's just like he he buys something, and he's like, yeah, cool, because he's obviously he happy and his... excited and yeah. involved in what's happening. Yeah. He forgets to rub it out, and then that's for it. Harrison has to prompt, then he? You go. You go Sure, mate. Take out your take, take out your take, take out your pool. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Or so if you've got like one uh, one guy that holds all the money, right, and like they're just keeping track of it in their book, and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. We still got a thousand. Well, uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that would be an easy way to cheat. But I actually find having one person no, in charge good. of the money it's good to do it. It, does, it makes it more um, well, and also when it gets to the point where okay, top that all up and let's take out the money. Yeah. it gets to the point where now, well, now everyone's paying attention to that one guy. Mm-hmm. If everyone's got their own little pools of money, yeah, definitely. and it's much more prone to cheating. I yeah. mean, it's easier. Yeah, if to there's do one person creation. being a bank, mm-hmm. then it's a lot easier to manage because. Yeah. 
It, just the agreement that we have would be like, right, yeah. so you're entitled to have your own money because you're your own character, but are we going to put this in the bank because we're all just going to use it? It's, like, yeah, it's communal yeah. stuff, yeah. Exactly. It, and it actually, it actually makes accounting a lot easier. Oh, yeah, totally. oh, it's, it's yeah. Tons but the thing easier. is, you can also do this with resources. Mm-hmm. If you've got six rations, yeah. when you say you eat one, just don't take it off. <laughs> yeah, it's just true. Don't take yeah, it it's so true, yeah. Um, torches, rations, 10-foot yeah. poles, all of this shit. Do you know is? I'm so like um, OCD slash autistic slash ADHD about all that crap. I yeah. can't not. Can't I've, I've used it. I've got to get off. Got to like, it I don't off. have any. I'm like, kill me. Yeah. <laughs> but what you can do is a GM, right? When mm-hmm. it comes to a point where, let's say, for example, you have a rule in your game, like I think they do it in OSC, where it's like a torch lasts D6 minutes, mm. right? So you roll it. Once it gets that amount of minutes, you turn to the player and go, right, take a torch off. You don't then just straight away look and start GMing. Yeah. You look at them, yeah. wait for them to do it and go, cool, right, next up, yeah. what happens is yeah. just do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have Watch to pick up their you, pencil. Yeah, you have Watch to pick up their pencil. Do something, yeah. and Make like, the ceremony of scrubbing <laughs> it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're they're hiding it with their hand. Yeah. Yeah. Look out for that. Like, they, they flip it around, they're using the rubber end instead. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're just sitting back with their sheet and you're like, did you take off? Yes. Can I see? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like 1,000 torch. Oh, my goodness. Man. Yeah, yeah, 1,000. Now, I've got some... Uh, now, this is a weird one mm. I've come up with. So, uh, um, make f- fake rules errata. You know, like on... I think it's errata or errata, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But you know on websites where they'll up- do a small update to a game oh, and right, it's right, like, yeah. a single printable sheet? Yep. Make your own one. And say you downloaded it from the website. Oh, fuck off. That's mental. Imagine if someone went to the length of doing that. What, just strong arm your own rules? Yeah, right. it's like under the guise of an official publication. Yeah, like, no, no, I downloaded it off the, uh, off the Pinnacle website. It actually says that the alertness edge gives me this now, actually. They changed it and updated it. And you've got to buy me a beer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I found it. It was, on, it was actually on the blog, the official just blog. Out, just come out. Yeah, I mean, and, and then what, what you do is if the GM does check it, which he probably won't, right, yeah. is, a, is that you you then go, he goes to the website and he says, that wasn't on there, mate. And I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. Like, they update the rules so often. I must have just got lost. Bloody hell. <laughs> uh, so you've got to kind of give it that. It's a yeah. bit of act. Um, yeah. But yeah, making fake rules are right. That's, that's a good one. That's a funny one. Um, and if you really want to go, if you really want to go like, like real, bad with this mm. go on Lulu <laughs> Oh, oh yes! Right. Uh, and yeah. uh, up to get your own version of the rules printed <laughs> with, that you've made um, yeah. alterations to and uh, yeah then then do that and then also like because then you can air quotes prove it because it has a physical copy well, I've got to get the rules out alright hold on alright well, <laughs> there you go <laughs> mate there it is bootleg now, copy I, 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 I get into this one in the next segment a little bit more yeah. but what happens is then once you've got your rules printed you offer to the GM be like oh by the way don't worry about rules uh, discussions I've got my book so uh, if any time one comes up <laughs> then you on the entries that you have like changed yeah. right to make your character better yeah. you just go oh god I can't remember does a, does a long sword do D8 or D12 poison damage <laughs> and, then, and then you just you flip through the book and you're like oh it says here poison damage oh, god so I can't believe I got it wrong oh, oh, yeah, never mind. and then and, or to go further to that then you then continue by uh, printing off some more and then basically Dish them giving them to the whole and make him like completely forget what the real rules are. No, yeah, what you do is you switch it with the GM's ones when he's not looking, yeah. and then throw that one in the bin. Yeah. It says I've got to give you a thousand gold every episode. Of that. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a, bit of a silly rule, but imagine you know, that uh, hey, rewriting a plot like campaign. <laughs> yeah. This this only works if you have a, a GM that does absolutely rules as written, but yeah. it can work. Yeah. Uh, now the other one as well, do a deep fake. Um, <laughs> of the author of the rules, <laughs> so, giving giving, giving a thumbs up <laughs> approval. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gary Gygax. Is yeah, like, it's like, this is true. So it's like it, it'll be like it, it, Gary Gygax giving a ruling on fifth edition. And it's like, hang on, didn't he die? <laughs> he's, he's like, well, actually, uh, yeah, warriors do get uh, d20 HP per level. <laughs> That's my buddy James. Ah. <laughs> Shout out to you, brother. You're the greatest guy I've ever seen. <laughs> It's like Cheers, that, Gary. Yeah, thanks, mate. See you so great. It's like that bloody, um, you see that with Kanye West, where he got Kim Kardashian a bloody, uh, a deep, like a hologram deep fake of her dad for her oh, birthday. No. And he's like, I just want to say I love you. I miss you. I'm up here in heaven waiting for you. You've got the best husband. He's the greatest guy in the world. <laughs> so if, a, if, a, if somebody does bring an official... Uh, an official, like, you know, the, the writer of the rules, mm-hmm. and then he's got a video, and he's like, look, he says it here, 
just if there's if there's a, a ridiculous amount of praise going to this person yeah. specifically, yeah. Yeah. you'll know. And have a little look at the the link. Yeah. If it's, especially uh, if it's got like two views. Yeah, it's, <laughs> especially if they're introduced by Carol Baskin or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, then yeah. you know something's going you know, on. Say it's fishy. Well, additionally, if it's uploaded on your mate's YouTube channel, then then, <laughs> <laughs> then you know. <laughs> FakeRules.com. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this brings us neatly onto gaming the GM. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where things get really nasty, mm -hmm. all right? So, sucking up to the GM. Oh, that oh, works. Mate. And I actually did it at the last game. Oh, he did. No, he did. But it, but there's a lot. Oh, there's so much embedded behind it. Right. But yeah. yeah, there's a lot of history to it. I mean, I want to get into it actually very quickly now before yeah, we carry on. on with the cheats. Because what happened was, is we went up to Els a hill in Ellswood. Ellswood Hill, I think it's called. Ellswood Common. Common, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's like... Yeah. A beautiful location, but we went up there during lockdown and we were, we were drinking. Um, oh, I like this. Yeah, and we, we started, as we were drunk, started fighting each other. It was fighting. like, not trying yeah. to hurt, fighting but you were seeing how many hits you could land, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just oh. like open fist um, things Tactics. to see how many you could hit. And I, yeah. it started because I, I said that, uh, that the current GM couldn't hit me. My reactions are too good. I was drunk. I was too confident. <laughs> And he was like... about Out of about yeah. 200 attempts to hit, he hit me three times. <laughs> oh. You're lucky you don't listen to this, because yeah. like, James is the only one that would stick up to this. Me and Sean were like laughing <laughs> about it all. Right, yeah. but no, this is where I get pissed off, right? Because fucking James, I've known you since we were fucking tiny children, right? And I said, right, who landed more punches? He says, JT. I'm like... You're my best friend. Why How not? has this happened? <laughs> <laughs> fucking cunt. Oh, right, but honestly, did I win? No, there was no winner. Oh, Oh, yeah, it was inconclusive because what happened was is that one round started, he swung a punch at me. <laughs> <laughs> he swung a punch. I, I, no, I, I went to punch him. He deflected the blow upwards and I punched him in the face. Yes, and a nosebleed. It, yeah, and yeah, he, he, he swifted his glasses and so the bridge of it um, cut his nose open. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, and then what happens, we started one more round and I got a I got a bit too bolster, bolsterous, and he bolsterous, bolsterous. Yes. I got a bit too bolsterous, yep. and um, I legged at him. He threw a punch, ducked underneath it. I did my, I did judo for about two weeks when I was a kid, so I used yep. the throw on him and threw him to the ground. Yes. Later on, he tried it back on me, Ooh. and he it was also when we weren't in a fight, it was unexpected. He tried it. I spun round. He fell on the floor again. Now, if that's not a win, I don't know what is. And James, you you were supposed to have uh, that, my back. That bit, that bit, yeah. That, I can win. vouch for that. That's, that's fine. But as actually, hell. we did end our round. As an inconclusive. Yeah, yeah, the, the official Because he got one. gravely injured by the power of my fist. <laughs> <laughs> he had to tap out. Mate, he fucking ride that way for so long. So, during the episode on, that up. we were playing... Dur yeah, during the last D&D &D game. Back back to cheats. Yeah. Sucking up. Um, I, I, I thought I deserved a Benny, so a reroll token for... Uh, an action that I did. Oh yeah, when they're he, called he inspiration. Bit, the GM tokens. was a bit on the fence, mm. and I we've nicknamed Ellswood Common Fight Hill now. Fight Hill, yeah. mate. So um, I said, um, "Will you give me a Benny if I give you a signed statement saying that you won at Fight Hill?" <laughs> and he was like, "Yes." And he made me. He said, "Right, say that you won against Harrison." And I need you to sign it with your signature. And I did that. I tore him off a little bit of paper and had it just so many get. Yeah, and he's so. just like he said. Um, uh, this confirms that James won. James wow. Thomason won Fight Hill. Wow. Um, and then he was like, oh, "Your name needs to be on there too." Yeah. Against oh. against Harrison, <laughs> and then he was like, "Yeah, sign it." And then he waited. He's like, "Give it to me." Waited for it to be handed to him physically, and he goes, no "Yeah, yeah, you get Benny, mate." Wow. <laughs> Funny thing Good is. Tactic. Uh, well, the thing is, if He's you, have a, if you have a warrior's heart, Nick, well, yeah, if you yeah. have the heart of a warrior, <laughs> yeah. you know who the true winner is. Yeah, what is so it? I know that contract's meaningless. <laughs> it means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fucking great. But anyway, yeah, sucking up to the GM. That's a, that's an easy one to mm -hmm. do. Bring bring your GM a pack of four beers when you turn up to the table. Oh, no, yeah. you'll definitely get one for that. No, that's not, but that's it's, deserved. It's, it's technically mm -hmm. not cheating. No. But it is... It is. Uh, it's. It's not. It's not sportsman like. Is oh, it? there's, there's one that is um, non sport. Off, off, in the, ah, the same kind of thing, but um, also not sportsman like, and kind of not cheating. Mm. But all you got to do is work with the person you're sitting next to, and and just be like, right, you're my hype man for the session. So every time something happens, you be like, oh, that's a Benny. Oh, that's a Benny. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's a, a Benny. Benny. Well, because well, obviously, the more a, people that say, "Oh, I, I think he deserves a Benny the, for that," the GM might be then the, the GM will right. like to go, "Yeah, that's right, a then. good point." Yeah, because really you know, when the table reacts to something, oh, and you go, "Oh, he deserves a Benny for that one," be a Benny, isn't it? then you're yeah. ca you're gaming the GM. You're influencing him to give out more <laughs> yeah, Bennies. And, and to be honest, we've got to the point where we do have to do that with my brother because he's stingy with the Benny. He was good for one session, and we thought, "What the fuck's happened?" But then. He went back to normal. Now, I've talked about, you know, <laughs> re reprinting an entirely 
new set of the rules and uh, offering to be a rules adjudicator. But the next one is make up obs- obscure rules that the GM is not likely to know. Just make them up. Trouble is, though, at the minute, we've got one who will check the rules. And we'll go, sorry, guys, it'll just take me a couple of minutes. But I will check this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's... I don't think that's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, the trouble is, if you're if you're with a GM that is the type that, if they don't know a rule, yeah. they will just make it up on the spot, mm-hmm. which is what you should do, really. Mm. Um then you can't get away with that. But just go, oh, but I've, I'm on an elevated platform, actually. Axe users get a uh, plus five when on an elevated platform, don't they? Yeah, because I mean, of the I, uh, trajectory. Yeah, of it, you know, yeah. I think I read it in uh, in, in Zergoth's Book of Wonders, a uh, obscure supplement. Uh, <laughs> yeah, indeed, monthly from 1970. Read the module your GM is running. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, mate. another one. Just oh, read mate, it. that's oh, such oh, a oh, fat oh, cheat. Oh, 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 I know what's coming up. Oh, I'm going to, oh, why are you getting that fucking uh, dragon armour? No reason. Yeah. Do you, like, you want to go in that cave? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, mate, because there's no treasure. I mean, I think there's no treasure in there. Yeah, so uh, directing what we're going to do, we're going to uh, kind of do tracking now. It's fine. Look, I want to go north. Um, why? Uh, just because I do. And then yeah. I'm going to get to this tree with the weird symbol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go left, right, up, down, and, and forwards, and then we're going to end the campaign. How did you know the bad guy's weakness was snakes? Just a feeling, mate. Just Don't a, worry yeah, about it. Just like it. If, 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 the player, if you notice a certain player constantly going in the, in the exact right direction and doing the exact yeah. right thing... Yeah. Then you can, but you can figure it out. Mm-hmm. Luckily, as we all know, players don't read books. No, but that oh, yeah. is the one reason the read. GM is unlikely to, to suspect that you've gone to the effort of paying money to read the module. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> the point. So yeah, that's another one. Uh, or. When the GM isn't looking, steal his notes. Oh. <laughs> right? Oh, no, take a quick picture. You know when he goes out for a quick piss? Yeah, yeah. Take oh, no, picture. that's so bad. I got excited about that. Push no. his screen down and then take pictures of all his notes. Yeah, that so what you do is you're, hold, you're, no, you're holding your phone. <laughs> the camera app is open. Yeah. You get up and go, I'm just going for a piss. You trip over, knock over the screen. And as you're doing it, you're doing, you know, those burst yeah. pictures. <laughs> <laughs> as you're picking the paperwork up, you're like... Sorry, sorry. Yeah. But if you steal the GM's notes, <laughs> yeah. then what you've got to do is when no other players are looking, looking, put it in your bag, right? And then when he, the GM goes, where's my notes? You just be like, what? I don't I don't know, mate. <laughs> well, do, well, they were just there, weren't they? And then the GM's like, and then next week, you're reading them. Yeah. <laughs> You're reading them, you're the GM. Yeah, and then what you do is you go back the following week, hopefully you're playing in the same place, and 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 strategically place it in a place he might not have looked. And I'll be like, oh, there it is, mate. Oh, look, it's, yeah, it's oh, under yeah. the sofa. Oh, oh, you know, it's behind your ear. Oh, look, it's behind the <laughs> toilet, mate. <laughs> behind the toilet. You must have taken it when you went for a piss. You were so drunk. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. That's really funny. That's yeah. a good um, um, cheat. It's a bit more chaotic. Oh, go on. But get the GM pissed. Ooh. Feed them, and then they're going to be a bit do lally. Yeah. So you can I, just I take know, things in. I know full well that when I'm more drunk, I'm more willing to accept uh, oh, yeah. very bold, stupid oh, moves. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, the thing like, is, we love you know, like the rule of cool. Like, yeah. it's, it's kind of evolved at least at our table to mm. be quite well. It's chaotic, really. Again, yep. and it's like the um, our last session, Harrison, Harrison was like, "Oh, should I do this or this?" And he's like, "Yeah, but that'd be cooler." So mm. fucking do that, yeah. mate. Cause yeah, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it's I nice. mean, if you fuck up, you're going to look like a dick, but. Yeah, but- if it works but yeah I, I'm, I'm like for example at the end of one of our cyberpunk episodes when one of the characters jumped off a, store, a tw- 20 story building with only an air mattress to, to, to he jumped off tried to blow it mid air I don't <laughs> I don't think I would have given him a death save <laughs> if, no. uh, if I wasn't drunk. So that's a good one. Yeah, get, yeah. A, get a GM nice and drunk. Maybe a little bit stoned. Put his favourite songs on. You know, <laughs> get him all happy. Give him a back rub. Yeah, that's right. how they like that. Just come in behind. Yeah. But also, double up. Look at the look notes. At the notes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you look tense. Go to the toilet and look up the monster's weakness. <laughs> Right, that's oh my one. god! Come in and try it. Have we tried ice? <laughs> no, the only way to do, the only I, way to get I'm away an epiphany with this. in the toilet with my phone for ten minutes. <laughs> really big shit. <laughs> yeah, apparently uh, trolls. You know, while they are native to hills and caves, <laughs> yeah. uh, they can sometimes prefer the uh, company of a city. And as such, and it's like, hang on, this is oddly specific. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Sounds it's like right. a Wikipedia entry. Yeah. <laughs> it only applies to this region. What? Uh, yeah, but then you just go, what's Wikipedia? <laughs> <laughs> what's an entry? <laughs> what's but yeah, that's that's. It, that's a good one, right? I mean, if it, just go to the loo, look up the monster's weakness. You've got a, you've got a, a victory on your hands. But you could just say I'm banning 
phones in the toilet Ooh. but that is a really weird thing to say <laughs> so it's probably one of the better cheats out of all. Yeah. True. the good thing is in something like cyberpunk is that, that, uh, that it's all people mm. so that's yeah. that's a way to get around it just don't play a game that has monsters in it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but with D&D um, I would say with every monster reskin it to be like your monster yeah. so that nothing from the uh, from from the actual book mm-hmm. Oh, you can't okay. relate it back. You yeah. can't take you can't New take name, anything for granted. Different um, color yeah. and, and uh, but well, that's what DCC says to do. If you if you get an orc, don't say a big green man with fangs. Mm. So you could just take the exact stats, but say a uh, it's a pig face guy with an axe or whatever, mm. right? Um, that's just a simple reskinning. But do it a little bit with the monsters' abilities and the way they act. Because if say for example, kobolds, it says that they stand back mostly and they'll use slings until somebody engages them. Yeah, Why don't have, have them be. run at them? Twenty of them at the Berserkers. same time. Yeah, 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 and and like just just and even you could even say at the beginning of your game just uh, just say by the way I'm not using entries from the monster manual. Some of them will be the same monsters, but they're my versions. Mm. That way, the person can't then just go to the room and look it up. Yeah. Even if you're still well, just using it exactly as from the book, they can't take that for granted. No, that's so true. they don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that's a pretty good one. Um, also intentionally misread rules to be in your favour then argue with the GM about them <laughs> <laughs> says here you get a plus eight you sure yeah yeah that's what it says well, what do you so, mean just yeah it. uh, it'll be I, I can't really think of an example but I know there would be one like I, I don't know like Say, for example, if you have the, I don't know, level-headed edge, mm-hmm. and it says take the better of two cards, mm-hmm. uh, then you benny it to get another card or yeah. whatever. And You'd be like, oh, yeah, no, but I get to draw two cards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 That's I a good fucking example. I get to draw two more cards. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, surely if I bennied it, I get to... Because, yeah, I get to redo the entire action. So now, I get two now the, more. Thing, so the truth day. is... It's up to the GM, yeah. right? Yeah. He, he can he can choose how choose how to rule on that. But yeah, yeah, intentionally misread it to be in your favour. Argue with the GM until you wear him down to the point of tears. And he's and he and he don't even know what's real anymore. <laughs> or what about like uh, a spell? Yeah, that you can only do one a day. But you're like, no, no, it's uh, it's one an hour. Yeah, on yeah. One. yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a good one. But you you could also just be like. You know, say say it, it's it, you say it's once a day, mm. and but you could do it now. I mean, now they do it in D and D where it's a long rest, right? Yeah. But you could do it well. Um, uh, well, it's been uh, it's technically only been one day because I or whatever. You know, just just intentionally <laughs> yeah, like yeah. it's hard to come up with examples for that one. But I know there's I know there's things people will be able to reference. Mm. You know, it's like well it, rules that you can interpret different ways. You know, yeah, yeah, it's it's like that yourself, sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hitting the GM with your car, then offering to fill in while he recovers, <laughs> then giving the players loads of high-powered items and XP, so that when he's back, right, easy, easy mode. <laughs> Why you've got a deck of many things? Yeah, oh, weird. It's like, well, they found it, mate. I mean, I, I, I'm just helping it. Why are they suddenly level 15? Well, I thought they deserved it. They're a very good team. They've been really nice. But hang on, your character wasn't even there and he's leveled up. Oh, yeah, well, you know, don't yeah. worry. He was on his own quest, mate. He was on his he, own quest. He's been grinding on his own for ages. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so this is a good one. Fake a severe illness whenever the game becomes difficult and run out the room with your character sheet. Because if you leave it there, you run the risk of somebody else playing them, right? Does that make a death save? Oh, I feel really sick. <laughs> oh, I just had a text. My mum's dead. Right, see you later. So you could try and let the heat go off. Yeah. And like, listen through the door and be like, oh, they're not talking about my Actually, I feel, a lot better. <laughs> Actually, I feel a lot better now okay. once they're out of the cave. You're like, so I get XP, obviously, because technically I was there. Yeah. Well, that death from nah, no, don't count anymore. No Oh yeah, well you know, and then and then as soon as the GM's like, well actually, could you just roll that? And you just be like, oh god, it's coming back. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, the next we we should talk about online because mm-hmm. online it, ca- it depending on how you play, it can be easier or harder to cheat. I mean, it's very easy to cheat, you know, like because we do uh, what's uh, what's the what's the uh, roll? Just roll out your desk. Yeah, roll out your desk. Yeah. So you know, we've got that trust side of it, yep. and I know there's a term for it, but. Um, you could easily just not roll anything. But oh yeah, mate, got sixteen. What was that roll? <laughs> Lord yeah. knows I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was funny because when we were playing online for a significant amount of time during lockdown, well, Ryan used to lay on his bed. He literally said he'd lay on his bed and stare up at the ceiling. But he had he had a dice tray next to him. Yeah, yeah. he did. But yeah. I mean, but I mean, e- easily if you're that comfortable, you could just not roll and be be forever comfortable during that session. <laughs> forever critical. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's. Um, it's a hard one because I prefer people to roll at home because it's just easier. Yeah, definitely. Because you're not the, the less you can make people use the technical side of the online apps, mm-hmm. the better. Mm-hmm. Trying to emulate the table, 
it is better, but the but the trouble is it's more open to it's more open to cheating. Of course it is. It just yeah. is. Yeah. Um, I mean, why can I never hear a dice roll in the background? Uh, don't worry about it. It's the uh, it's the gate and the mic, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's yeah. got really sen- sen- sensitive. Yeah, What's that dice rolling noises on. Here's here's one for you though. <laughs> if you're playing on roll twenty mm-hmm. and you have rotating GMs, mm-hmm. log in as a GM. <laughs> <laughs> and then look at look at the gems look at notes. all the stuff and, and you could, you'll be able to see through the fog of war and you'll be like <laughs> yeah. oh, right. a, sorry over there something over there uh, I want to go left please and then mark them yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah you, mark them doesn't it show you <laughs> doesn't it show you with a, with a, that you're logged in in a certain capacity I don't know it will but this will probably work better if your name is something like Graham Monkson. <laughs> right? Because you'd be like, I oh, know, I'm not logged in as a GM, that's just my initials. And then my character name. <laughs> just be like, GM. Or, or just be like, no, I have that because I'm a general manager. You've got to right, so <laughs> you, yeah. make sure that you can get away with calling yourself a GM somehow. Yeah. I used to be like, oh, no, mate, and I've got to log in because my account has been hacked. Do you have one? Yeah, yeah. It's the same it's the same one. You just click just a button yours. to switch. <laughs> nah mate, no. Nah. Uh, no, actually it's a pro- a protest against uh, GM modified uh, uh, genetically modified foods and I am I'm, I'm sticking with it actually. So can you you know, if you don't care, that's fine. But uh, I do and yeah. I'm and it's staying that way. Suddenly the GM sees his monsters getting deleted. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, now I I did discover, um, and you know, if you do have if you do have a problem with people doing that, just do the rolling on the screen because you know that. But you could also set up a macro that looks like a D twenty roll, but actually the range is different because you can name the macros anything you want. (laughs) Yeah, definitely D twenty. Yeah, definitely D (laughs) twenty. But ignore all rolls under a (laughs) seventeen. Yeah, yeah. And just, it's just it, you just call it D twenty roll, click it, and every time you do it, you're like, Whoo, cash back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's it just it just get people to roll on the app if you think they're cheating. Yeah, you know? I I actually got invited to a game once. It was an online D and D game run by a bloke that we all know. And uh, one of the other players just told me uh, if he's going to say rolling on the screen, uh, just don't, don't. And no, if he's going to say I'm rolling on my desk, don't let him do it because he 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 will constantly fudge rolls. <laughs> Oh, that's naughty. <laughs> oh, I heard someone who, um, they played uh, some form of Warhammer mm-hmm. and um, they were a GM and they said if their player picks them off, they fuck them up. So, I mean, it's the opposite way, I know, because we're talking about players yeah. cheating. But here's a GM, I mean, it's easy to fudge that, but he he literally told me, oh Morning. yeah, I fudge rolls all oh, the time. Oh, mate. I was like, you suck, mate. Yeah, you sucks. are the worst sucks. kind. Oh, mate. So, I mean, a, a good platform for, do, for, for uh, uh, you know, de-cheatifying de- de- mm. is Tabletop Simulator because you roll physical dice on there or yeah. you click on the yeah. little dice rolly thing and, yeah. and uh, yeah, there's no way to, to game it really um, except so I did discover a cheat on Tabletop Simulator so obviously on Tabletop Simulator you can just look at any part of the table at any time yeah. but you can get a mod for it where the GM section has sort of a shadow over it that players can't see right yeah but the objects within that are still interactable with by players. And you, you, when you're over something, you can pick up. The little hand opens, right? So uh, once I was I was in a game, and honestly, I, I did it to the point where it made uh, the GM Gary very angry. Um, but I kept on. He had all his monster cards, and I would just pull them out and go, hmm, and then put it back. <laughs> <laughs> but he Still noticed hands. obviously because I couldn't I couldn't see that I was putting it back in the right area yeah. so so he noticed when it was all out of whack and he had to actually eventually stop me from interacting with the table at all <laughs> oh my you god he got barred yeah yeah, I mean that that was bad, Absolutely. but it was when I was putting. He had all his monster minis lined up, and I kept on. I'd be like, Whoop, and draw draw it out, and then put it somewhere on the table. And he's like, well, "How did that get there? What's that doing?" Yeah, oh, yeah, and also, uh, yeah, I was changing the size of some of them as well. If, well, if I'm being honest, it was a little bit of a boring game, and I think that's why I was doing it. But. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but that is wrong. But that's an exploit you can use if you're on tabletop simulator. If you know the GM's gone to the loo Mate during Shandy. the break, just go <laughs> and pull the cards out. <laughs> Happy days. Play it now. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, flip the table. <laughs> well, yeah, most people turn that off yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Do you remember when it was just constant? It was hell. <laughs> and it would, like, crash my computer as well because yeah. there were so many bloody objects on there. <laughs> oh, my. But online as well, it's easier to get away with um, lying about your stats. But, yeah. again, just have your character, their character sheets printed out and on front of you in the table. Mm-hmm. Um, on front of you in the on table. In the table. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long day. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but we, I was going to put in uh, here, is it possible for the GM to cheat? Um, but I think that could be an episode... 
well, in uh, and of yeah. itself. And I think maybe we'll save that for the very next episode. Good idea. So, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. a series of cheating. Yeah, I like it. And yeah. then after that, we'll do cheating in your marriage. Yeah. 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 Pool tables. Oh, cheating on your, your, cheating your job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. life. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, uh, yeah, uh, to, to conclude, mm. we've got a lot, of, a lot of different methods in there. Some outrageous, some <laughs> actually probably more plausible. Yeah, yeah. But um, when is it morally okay to cheat at an RPG? As a player? Yeah, never. Yeah, I agree. Mm. I agree. Um, I, I, I think the, the the thing is, if you're... Well, uh, it's that whole thing of um, you're only cheating them. yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're cheating because yourself you, out of an experience. Why you, put the effort in to turn up to a game that you're just yeah. going to... Like, and the thing is, we, we roll with the rolls. Yeah. And that's how it is. And, and your fucking character dies, that's 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 because that's the way the, the dice... That is the fun of the game. Yeah. Yeah. If every yeah. roll you did was a success and everything you wanted to do happened... You'd, you'd be so bored. you things to do and you wouldn't know what. You'd just be like, oh yeah, cool, I'm just going to do that, do that. Do you remember when... I've just thought of a good sequel for the RPG don't <laughs> and it's called do, do but all the roles are successes now I don't know how, how that's going to play out but that's it everything's a do well it's like a case of it would just have to be a yes man so everything would have to happen can I do that yeah. so they can't <laughs> that's it that's all you're dropping for the gym can I kill him can I turn into a jet <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's no the game, the game's just going to be called yes yes but um, the oh, only time shit. you can do a no is if another player sneezes. Right, okay. Yeah. Right. Something like that. Genius. Something arbitrary. Genius. But yeah, I agree. It's, it's cheating yourself out of an experience. You're cheating mm-hmm. yourself out of the full experience and, and of... Because if, you want to, if you're playing a heroic game and you want to feel like a hero, it's not going to be that way. Well, at the same time, right. like obviously this happens to every single one of us at the table. Mm. When you're heavily invested in a character and they fucking perish, mate, yeah. real life, you're cut up. Yes. If you're about to do something and it just gets, um, you know, just brushed off the shoulder because of your role ended mm. up being pathetic like you explain uh, one of the most amazing moves that you're ever going to do but you're rather crit fail oh, yeah. you're going to sit there and be deflated that yeah. is the point yeah well I, I find that those low points where you know a long held character dies yeah. are part of the, the experience See, the, the, cru- the soul crushing defeat of yeah. getting a character to level 12 uh, yeah. and it dying is, is awful yeah. but it's getting through those that makes it fun yeah. and, and it's doing it without cheating that yeah. makes it fun and I it, think yeah and it can add to the story you know if it's like like you said a really loved character that goes and the rest of the party is really mad about it and yeah, yeah it fuels it doesn't it but look at look at fucking Stanley in the D&D game exactly. like, he died and the guys went on a three uh, three session long quest to resurrect him. yeah that's right and uh, mm-hmm. for you as the GM that's content yeah. but if, if, if all the people are, are, are succeeding all the time none of that type of stuff is going to happen oh. there's no emergent story because yeah. you yeah. just succeed at absolutely everything yeah. so yeah I, th- I just think cheating don't do it it can ruin a good game yes. and we'll get on to how if a GM can cheat but should you hit your GM with a car then take over yes yes, yes. yes. that's absolutely that's the one that will allow that's absolutely fine. yeah that's the only one you'll allow because yes. it's, it's and just... also the deep deep fake of the creator <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> it's me Gary Gygax you're doing a great job James <laughs> <laughs> thanks Gary <laughs> <laughs> oh brilliant um well, actually, another one you could mm, do, mm. you know, in that same vein, and we'll use this to wrap this up. If you don't know how to make a deep fake, dress up as a ghost. <laughs> Just put Whoa! <laughs> You're misunderstanding the rules. Harrison is right. Who is he saying? And I come back in from the loo. I'm like, who's that guy? <laughs> what was that noise? It's like, Harrison, why is your face painted white? Oh, I was just cleaning my teeth. <laughs> what? Cleaning my teeth, I've got a bit to carry it away, clean my face instead. <laughs> yeah, anyway, let's go. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Those are ways to cheat in your games and ways you can look out for it. Um, I think uh, if you guys have ever seen any cheats that we didn't list here, mm-hmm. you know, send them in. We'll read them out in the feedback. Yeah, we need to know. We need to know. We have you see? ever ever cheated, actually? Go on. Go on, own up. As player? Yeah, no, dear, you know, isn't so of any of our listeners. Ah, uh, yeah. But have oh, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have no. you? Have no, no, we will, we'll, we'll, actually, if you have cheated, tell us how and we'll read it anonymously. Yeah, we will add on you, yeah. yeah we'll Unless you on. want to be called out because you're a fucking a terrible <laughs> human for doing it. <laughs> yeah, tell us. We want to know. We want to know. And, and that is it for uh, the main subject. Shall we do some electro letters? I think so. In the future, you will be able to send a letter or parcel from anywhere on the planet this sir is the electro letter so uh, yeah we asked you guys for your questions and we got shit loads this time as well as some that were left over from the last one okay um, oh my god so yeah first one comes in from Kill Defences he says you know what I'd like an episode on how to successfully run an investigative game like Call of Cthulhu or 
Delta Green, sorry, I had to figure out what that meant. <laughs> yeah. If if you're only familiar with D&D style games, I got some good feedback on Reddit, but it would be cool to hear the boys talk about it. Oh, that's cute. Mm. So, yeah, call, call of Cthulhu, bet you've played fantasy your entire life. Right, okay. How 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 do you do it? Descriptions. Uh, descriptions. They're the, they're the one key that will that will absolutely rope in any fantasy based player because I was pure oh, yeah. breed fantasy yeah. Yeah, yeah, before yeah, yeah. anything yeah. and then the descriptions really immersed my yeah. mind into it. I also think that's important just for an investigative game in general. Yes. Just to give players all the information mm-hmm. and it's there up to them to do what they will with it. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I, I'd say, you know, the, 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 the trap I think you might fall down if that's the case is that you would probably insert too many fights Ooh, in there. And you've got to be careful with that. Yeah, especially in Call of Cthulhu, not only does it not make a lot of sense a lot of times, mm. uh, it's just not the best game for fighting. It's really, right. uh, um, it's fine in a pinch, but yeah. yeah. It's not Yeah, it's and not I think set, it's not set out for that, really. That's it? what, and also, like, some D&D players might be used to a more railroady experience. Especially Whereas, if they're murder hobos as well. So exactly. They're always, they're always just going along a train and, 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 you know, taking people out. And in Cthulhu, you've got to explain this. Well, maybe then uh, what you could do, if you're GMing a game that's like Call of Cthulhu, right? Mm-hmm. But your players are used to the murder hobo lifestyle, <laughs> yeah. and they start attacking a shopkeeper. You can have them lose sanity uh, yeah. yes, uh, on course. the spot mm-hmm. and do it as well. You're you're becoming less human yes, because you're because you because you're, you're, you're giving into you're something. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's a good one. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think just try not to include fights and try to make it to try to make it open. Mm. I would say get some of the Call of Cthulhu published adventures 100%. because they kind of they give you that layout. Yeah. Definitely read through at least one. Mm-hmm. Before you run it, get the feel for like, it, yeah. Because the, yeah, you know, the like they often yeah. give like here's newspaper clippings. If they go here, they get this information, blah blah. blah. And it's like things like that. Mm. So I think yeah, those are my tips. Yeah, definitely. you got any tips? Uh, I would probably say obviously you know D and D. You love your monster manual. You love your monsters. And Cool Look Cthulhu does monsters very well. Yeah. So hype up the monsters. Not like you know when if it's an investigative one where they don't find out. Just like you said, descriptions about the monsters make them know that there's some fucked up monsters. Well, and actually that would bring better. that would bring the D and D players on board because yeah. it's like well you you know it's it, there still is a f- uh, fantastical element yes, to the whole thing absolutely um, and maybe you could maybe you, you could start off the first session with an entire party of characters seeing one of these monsters yeah, be cool. not comprehending it then going completely mad yeah and absolutely. that could be your little prologue into it oh one more Let's squeeze one in as well you could set a Cthulhu style game in a fantasy setting that's true yeah the, uh, get a feel for the investigation but stick them true to what they've been playing which is fantasy and then maybe move over time warp stuff like that well and Sandy one. Peterson I can't remember what he or she works on but I think it might be called Cthulhu yeah, but anyway yeah, 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 yeah they yeah. um Released a fifth edition manual of Call of Duty oh, Monsters. Yes. So, yeah. Oh yeah, yes, saw that. Oh yes, right. Yeah, it's called Peterson's Pretty Bad pe- 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 People. People. No, I can't remember what it's called, but it's Peterson's something. Yeah. Which I don't think you should have that in the title because it sort of takes away from it. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're <laughs> monsters of the dark black by Sandy Peterson. By Sandy. Uh, yeah, Griffiana. They he she says show question. What were your first clearest TTRPG memories? Mine was where a 4E Dragonborn one-shotted an Ice Witch lol. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I've mentioned it before in the show, but my first clearest one is playing the D&D board game when we were very young. Yeah, with Sean as GM saying he's going to fuck us up. Yeah, because we didn't understand it. It was sort of a collaborative idea. Yeah, he's like, he's I've was... made my own dungeon this week and I'm going to fucking kill oh you. Like, yeah. And it's like, you go into a room, there's like four liches in there and like it's, it was well, fucking yeah. insane. Oh, cheers, mate. It's like, yeah, we didn't even get past yeah, the first messy, room. Yeah, messy, mate. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's probably my first clearest one. As well, I remember... Um, when I was working at Santander with you, uh, no, I was working at an undisclosed company with you, and um, I um, was reading. Another colleague of mine says, "Do you play D and D?" And I was like, "Well, I used to a couple of years ago." And then uh, she was like, Let's "Read this comic, The Order of the Stick," and I got really oh, into yeah, it. Right, yeah. and I was reading it at work, and I was like, "I have to play D and D." So I went down to the local game store, and you remember that old guy that we yep. used to work there, yep. who, who sadly passed away, yep. who's a bit of a cock. Uh, he wasn't in and it was the first time I ever had a positive experience in that store and it was the lady who was oh, yeah. obviously very nice oh yeah yeah but yeah. I remember being a bit like uh, feeling a bit out of my depth that I'm finally getting into like proper D&D mm. and buying stuff and then um, I bought a set of dice and the woman uh, she gave them to me and she was like go on then give it the first roll oh, and I was just like nice. I rolled it I rolled it on the counter but I felt so awkward oh. I felt so I was just like I don't <laughs> know so... what I'm talking about I'm going into a store ask, and it's just I don't know it felt that. that I love how excited clear. she was yeah yeah she's, she's really she's, she's really, really nice yeah. and then um, 
Yeah, that, so that's that's probably one of my clearest sort of early ones, just getting back into role-playing mm. games. Yeah, well, well, my other one, I say, as opposed to um, the session that Harrison ran for me and Sean for a, a quite a while mm. um, in Pathfinder 3.5, oh, yeah. um, it was when I bought my first set of dice, I was actually in Amsterdam. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, and I I walked a, a few miles to find um, uh, the shop to sell wicked. them. Yeah. And I, and I walk around just like, oh, there's wicked stuff around oh, here. Mate, find a so nice so... set of dice. Yeah, mate. That's yeah. cool. Um, mine is well so I played obviously a bit I was a bit later to the hobby so um, our first game that I ever played with you guys was called Cthulhu but my, <laughs> it was here mate the memory was of uh, so I used to scribe everything do you remember but I'll never forget drawing the um, the picture of the little uh, uh, lopped off bollock yeah so <laughs> it was in our first Call of Cthulhu campaign two episodes in the guys were being tracked down by these cultists and uh, to leave a warning they left one of his testicles in an egg cup <laughs> With a note that just said, "Don't fucking try and find us, bollock." <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. That's really made me laugh. What about when, uh, when I before I'd met you and we met up in the pub to see if you would be a good fit for the group? <laughs> yeah, it's That's funny because I don't think I would ever do that now. I would just be like, "Oh yeah, come along uh, and we'll see if we like." Yeah, we'll see if we like you. <laughs> but yeah, it was, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, we got on. Yeah, so oh, that's well, nice. absolutely, mate. Absolutely. But um, yeah, fucking, it's it, uh, there are a lot of early memories. But like you, when you went to Amsterdam as well, like whenever I go to a new country. I like to look for um, RPG shops to yeah. see if they have any. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because obviously in Japan they had really fucking good ones. Mm. But oh, amazing, I remember when yeah. I went to Tunisia and mm. I looked up. <laughs> no it's like, well, any sort of Middle Eastern place is probably unlikely yeah. to. Uh, but I um, I looked up and there was one shop right in the north, like miles away from us, that sold a bit of Warhammer but mostly chess sets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's amazing. Oh, mate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the next one comes in from the butt man. He says, Is it too late to enter the jingle contest talked about in episode seven? No. <laughs> if you remember those, they were really bad. <laughs> one, of, one of them was done by my mum. Yeah. One was Stefan Dragon Spawn singing a Christmas tune. Yeah, well, yeah. wasn't Sean doing Sean, Sean just do went. Da, 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 da. Wow. wow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Talon, he says, question, when are your dudes going to play Mothership? Um, you should you should get Mothership. I know, I do need to get Mothership. It looks awesome. So yeah. it's a sci-fi horror role-playing game. Yeah. Is it? Oh, that's right amazing. up your street, yeah. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, got, it's in the vein of like of Alien or Dead Space. Or yep. There's loads of things you that's like. Oh, you you fucking love exactly. it. Exactly. So no, it's our game. But yeah, we uh, probably... When, when we, we get it. When we get it. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, that's yeah. Yeah. technically correct. I would like to get that one. Captain Gibbon, he says, do you often steal plots wholesale? from books slash TV slash movies and if so what are your favourite ones what are your favourite ones you put into your game one yes always yeah, yeah of course that's I mean, all that's GMs do stuff. Yeah. yeah well is yeah. it good artists borrow great artists steal yeah that's yeah. it so, yeah that's yeah. it yeah I mean I uh, honestly honestly probably my favourite one that I ripped off and it, it was very very close to the source material was that I stole the plot of the video game Earthbound oh, yeah. for the original Call of Cthulhu yeah. game yeah. yeah all I did was make it uh, more t- setting appropriate but it's exactly the same like you dug under this guy's house and mm-hmm. there's these weird gold statues making people uh, mad there's uh, like a really old alien god type thing coming back and people are trying to hurry it up um, it's also kind of like the one of the biggest themes in Earthbound was like the death of innocence basically because yeah. the guy who wrote it it was based on his experience where he went into a cinema and saw a really violent film by accident when he was a kid oh, right. so at the very end of Earthbound do you you basically you shrink the, all the characters shrink down and uh, turn into robots that then have to go and perform an abortion on, <laughs> right. on the baby yeah. oh, on the alien goodness. before it's born. Yeah, and it goes from this kid friendly game to this unbelievably dark fucking game. I mean, let me, let me play you the uh, the music here because it's oh you played that for the last session, didn't you? Right. Well, this one's actually uh, from the original game, but yeah, um, I guess theme here it is. Right. And this is a kid's game. And look at that, that's the image. Yeah. Oh, wow. And the worst thing is, is when it's like this game throughout the whole thing, it's been like really kid friendly. But yeah. right at the end, it, um, yeah, it turns really dark. And every time you hit that monster, it, it says, it hurts, and oh, things like this. Right. And also, it will, um, uh, like when it hits you, it just says, 
uh, you can't comprehend Glegus's attack. It's like, and <laughs> that was so fucking cool. That's brilliant. But I thought that was perfect for a Call of Cthulhu game yeah. because it's like, you think you're just investigators investigating a cult, but yeah. really there's this thing that you can't understand and you've got to sacrifice yourselves to, yeah. Nice, but that was probably my favourite one that I ripped off. A great game and I enjoyed running it because I knew the plot so well. And it was the beginning of our, of our history, really, yeah. because it would be seven years this year. Yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I know, I saw oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how about you, Nick? Uh, Destiny, probably. Uh, oh, yeah. I took a lot of... De- I t- I Nick's a lot of Destiny. used all the lore when I'd done my Destiny game. Uh, and the and intro some, was the same. It was yeah. The, yeah, so the intro was like the first mission. And um, yeah, just ripped that off because it's great. So, yeah, it's in the in space. Yeah, that was fun. Mm. I'm just... Sorry, I'm walking away. He's, He's walking away. I need to get this for the next question. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Yeah, fucking um, the Destiny one was very good. James, you ripped off Hannibal for your oh, game. Oh, yeah. I did, yeah. Right. Um, but yeah. it was the only one that uh, I really properly cool. GM'd and I learned a lot CSI. of uh, lot of uh, GM novice mistakes I made during uh, me it. Too, so. mate. I wouldn't worry. Everyone yeah. makes mistakes, and I, I still do. Mm. And, I, you know, like, it, as long as you learn from it and move yeah, on, it's fine. It. You know, now, and I, I, we enjoyed the game, yeah. but it was just there. You, I don't think you were entirely satisfied with Mm. I, I thought it was fun mm. especially the fights awesome. were really fucking yeah, good were like good. really good yeah um, yeah next up uh, Vod- Vodrilus he mm. says have you ever run stars without number I've gone through the trouble of doing the whole sector creation process and so far I'm loving it any chance of you guys playing a one shot or mini campaign I'd love to see what sort of a spin you'd give it so this is Ooh. stars without number okay. I've just I went to the shelf to get the book yeah um, it's a big and it's chunky one it's absolutely beautiful so this is an OSR game but he's really taken the OSR to its absolute limit and made an entire system out of it for sci-fi and look how fucking gorgeous wow. it is the artwork is amazing yeah. it really is so this is a whole sorry, a whole system. It's a whole system that he's based on the original D and D rules, but it's like uh, it's just he's expanded it so much. Amazing. It's absolutely brilliant, and the, the book is just the presentation is just outrageously oh, yeah. good. Look at that! Oh, oh my god, the, the book is fat as well. Yeah, it is fat it's expensive. Book. Yeah, yeah, if you if you get the premium me. color option, it's like fifty quid, I think. Ooh. But it's like it's kind of worth it, and yeah. it's often touted as being the best fucking sci-fi game out there. So look at that, colorful. fucking beautiful. Yeah, but yeah, I, do, I I absolutely want to play it, um, mm. and I reckon I, we we need to do a sci-fi actual play at yeah. some point. Oh shit, yeah. So, so maybe we this were... will be the one we use. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because we've done cyberpunk, but we've not done like well, we've done um, space hard sci-fi, sci-fi yeah, hard space sci-fi. opera That's type. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, we had ice and steel. So, Yes. There he is. Nick's, Nick's currently flipping Robots. through the book. Sorry, guys. We had what? Ice and Steel, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, Cyberpunk is an offshoot of classic sci-fi, isn't it? So mm-hmm. I think that counts, but I'd like to do one with, like, a spaceship, a little bit like Star Trek. Oh, that'd be... that. I think yes, I think we'd really do well with that. I also nice. think, like, you know in Star Trek, it's like the um, people with the uh, red shirts, like the, the people on the ship that wear the red shirts. Yeah. yeah. They're the people that get expended when the ship's being attacked. Oh, yeah. They're how like the minions. Uh, how good would that be in DCC yeah. if you had, uh, an, even if you're level one, you have a number of red shirts always with you <laughs> cool. that you could sacrifice? Or be like um, Mr. Wilcox's uh, minion uh, spending. Like, yeah. you use ah, a Benny yes, to, to have a minion and absorb the damage. And you're not the, the main character, so you have to put up with, like, a really s- snobby uh, Oh, if you started out... Kirk, and, well, like, it's like, oh, bloody hell, Spock's kicking off again. Well, that's where it would be. <laughs> First session, the funnel... Is that you're all red shirts, right? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then you have to just survive an onslaught alien attack. And if you do, you then you, well, job. everyone's dead, so you get upgraded to like ensign <laughs> rather than like yeah. I don't know the janitor <laughs> or whatever. Brilliant, <laughs> love it. That's fun. Uh, CJ, he says uh, best published adventure you've read but not run yet. Worst? Question best, mark. Best or worst? Best and worst. Oh God. Uh, wow. Well, um, it's loads. it's weird because like I, uh, there's there's so many that I want to run, and the, like the best one I haven't run yet. Um, I, I there was one I've got called What Ho Frog Demon, yes, so yes. I really want to run. Oh. <laughs> that looks really good. Uh, yeah, that that one looks really awesome. Um, you bought me an adventure a while ago mm. called Inside the God Skull. That's it. Yep. For DCC, and that's one I've always been meaning to run, but haven't found a way to shoehorn it into a campaign yeah, yeah, yet. I but I think it might be have to be a, like a one shot, like a three shot or something. Yeah, that'd be cool. But it's a really cool adventure where. There's this uh, thing that's going to awaken inside a uh, skull of a dead god in space, and these monks send, send you up to go and uh, go and sort it out. So yeah. it's a dungeon set inside a skull, and yeah. it's fucking awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> um, worst, I, I I bought one recently. It's not really a setting, and uh, um, an adventure is cheating a little bit because it's a mini setting mm. called Woodfall. And I've got to be honest, oh, I was yeah. really fucking disappointed by it. It's got a lot going for it, um, and it's basically this sort of. Uh, 
gulch, swampy gulch that's like uh, run by this witch. Yeah. As a result, there's like skeletons walking about. There's loads of different factions of like goblins, skeletons, all of these things. But the book is really disappointing because it's it's very very light on detail, right, and it's okay. supposed to be system neutral. So none of the monsters' abilities are really talked about. Mm. And there's a page where it shows you the hex map, and it's got symbols for each of the factions, but it doesn't actually just tell you which faction it is. So you constantly have to refer to oh, the other one, oh, and it's like not really made with usability in mind. Yeah, and yeah, that, yeah. That, yeah, it kind that of annoys sucks. me. Yeah, um, so annoying. yeah, Woodfall, Woodfall. Um, a bit disappointing. Mm. I'd also say that there's another one I wanted to run. Um, the Rose War by RPG Pundit, mm-hmm. and I've got to be honest, it's uh, so it's medieval authentic settings and adventures for uh, during the War of the Roses. Mm-hmm. Ooh, but the thing is, cool. right, what it is is it's based on. Uh, so, so he he claims that it's based on the myths of the time. So, but imagine that the myths that people believed at the time were real. Mm-hmm. But then, for some reason, France uh, is taken over by frogmen, and uh, <laughs> it's like it, at that point, I just look at it and go. Okay. 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 Well, uh, so histori- okay. historically medieval accurate is it? And I was, I was, I was actually googling. I was like, did frogmen ever take over France in any any myths? No. Like no, they definitely didn't. It's or is that a, like a, a double finger up to French because yeah. they like frogs? Yeah, it must be. It must That's be. That's so it's out. A, it's, it's a racist. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. What high frog? Frog demons. <laughs> yeah. See, that's that's at least it says up front. Mm. It's got yeah. frogmen. Yeah, you know that's I mean? exactly it. You know what you get. Look, if you've got frogmen in your games. Please make it explicit. Okay. Trigger warning. Yeah, frogs. it's got to be in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, how about you? Eventually, you've uh, read but want to run. Uh, ooh, I'd like to run the um, Mutant Mechatron Adventures. Obviously, oh, yes. for oh, Zero, yeah. where you're all robots. Uh, some post-apocalyptic. Some... All the masters have fucked off, and yeah. you're robo men. And you'd be, yeah, and you'd be you're like, you wonder why. Uh, that would be awesome because then that would cool, be the, really the full cool trilogy that you yeah that's it oh it's four actually there's also um, the perspective of the humans that did survive by Ambic oh, I, do, shit. Uh, I reckon that will probably be really mm. good considering who made it yeah. and the system absolutely but the only thing is it's a little bit disappointing when you go right you're mutants you're now bipedal animals <laughs> yeah. uh, in, in, a, in a like a, a weird science area yeah. and now you're robots whose masters have left yep yeah. Next up, humans. It's just the humans. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah. So I'll do both of that one. Um, but uh, what have I read that doesn't look good? Oh, I'm not sure actually. To be honest with you, oh, you tend to um, you tend to, to come across a lot of gold. Really to like. be honest, yeah. yeah. And also, it's like a, a lot of stuff that I buy will will often be something that's quite considered. Do you mm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I well, I mean, say, there's yeah, also bit... other bits that you specifically Harrison gets because. Mm. Um, for review purposes, yes. so Harrison, you get a lot of the. I've shit. probably got a lot yeah. more guff than anyone else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I'm literally just thinking of like um, Zach S, for example. Yeah. I like everything he's done, <clears throat> but I got frostbitten and mutilated, expecting expecting it to be amazing, and it's actually quite rubbish. Yeah, you and so said. it's like, but that's the thing. Yeah, for a review, I do end up getting quite a lot of shite. Mm-hmm. I mean, if we were to look through my cupboards, there's the, the good ones are up there on the top shelves, <laughs> but there's a, yeah. a, a doored off bit at the bottom, and all the shite is in there. <laughs> yeah. You remember when I bought Mithrog and I had it on my shelf range and I'm like, what am I doing? Right? I'm just going to chuck this in the bin. Uh, Bargle the Infamous, he says, is there any RPG or RPG setting you used to be really into but have lost interest in? I will take Pathfinder as red for that one. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, Troika, probably one for me. Because, mm. you know, Troika, I like the system and I think it's a good, simple system, but it works better playing in person. So mm. I, I, the one campaign I ran in it, I cut it short. But... Um, yeah, I mean, it was just too simple. Just a little bit too simple. The fighting yeah. was really good, but the rest of it was kind of broken and overpowered and rubbish. Yeah. Not only that, but like there was one book I bought called uh, Fungi of the Far Realms, right? <laughs> Great book, because it, what it is, is it's a de- it. detailed book all about mushrooms. Yeah, yeah 50 times of mushrooms. Yeah, it's more deep. than that. It's like, mm. uh, I don't know, 250, something like this. Oh. But you can roll it using a D666 roll. Right? Oh, that was it. Yeah, yeah sorry. But the problem is, is that it's actually completely unusable, right? Because because of the fact that all of the mushrooms, it tells you where they grow. Oh. So the point is, is if you roll randomly and it says this one grows under the armpits of sweaty men and there's no sme- sweaty men, <laughs> it's just an unusable book. Yeah. Not only that, but I bought the bloody um, uh, prehistoric uh, setting for it <laughs> and I, I, I liked it, but the artwork was awful. And so many of the, like, the classes in there were 
broken and unusable. That's one I really, really lost interest in. Uh, Lamentations of the Flame Princess is another. I just, yeah. I, I didn't that like was a shame because we really adored it for a mm, while, but then yeah. I think the uh, system, it got a bit stale. I, yeah. I, I think the skill mechanics and magic mechanics let it down a little bit. Because it's don't really think it's good as well like, thought through as other ones. It's just yeah. a straight up. Not only this, but what I like about Lamentations and why I still buy the products is because their adventures are usable and all their supplements yep. are usable for, for other stuff. And they're really, really, really good. good. Yeah. Like Vaughnheim, yeah, yeah. Red and Pleasant Land, um, Death Frost Scarecrow Doom is fucking one, awesome. Scarecrow Adventure. That's a very That's good a one. That's a really good one. Mm. But um, yeah, I mean, what it is is that it, it, say it says it's really metal, but none of the rules actually back that up. Mm. All it is is just standard D&D. But they got metalish artwork. Now the the supplements are very you know heavy metal and very gross. Mm. But you know Mortborg, that it just to me that is the ultimate heavy yes, metal RPG, absolutely. and it just took over for me from that. So yeah. it's like if I want to play that, I'm going to play a system that actually backs it up. Yeah, but definitely. Run Deathrost Doom using Mortborg, and mm. that'll be a hell of yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, that's it for me. How about you? Nicholas uh, Cypher system not that I've gone bored of it I just haven't really picked it up again since I've run it once which is a shame I really like, like Cypher I did as well it's like really good for a nine yeah but it's, well, it's not that I've gone off it I'd say I've just kind of forgotten about it for a little bit mm. um, and same view with Lamentations I think it's a similar situation there with that where there mm. are better systems there are better systems doing good. what that is trying to yeah, do yeah exactly um, you know I wanted something with simpler magic than DCC mm-hmm. um, just to have as a, like a, a game where I, if I want that then it's like Morkborg exists and old school essentials yeah. and you know if you want a game with absolutely no metal content in it that is standard D&D done really well mm. then old school essentials is the one really yeah, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't pick Lamentations never um, but yeah that's it mm-hmm. James how about you James I think GURPS that's fucked us off. GURPS. Yeah. yeah. As yeah. soon as we picked up Savage Worlds, it was like, yeah, I see why. I see why <laughs> yeah. GURPS, people call GURPS complicated. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it was true. weird. Because obviously, that especially true, as, true. as we were introduced into it, fortunately, I'd say we enjoyed it so much because the main players at the table who at least had been playing longer than, well, you and Ryan, mm. really, was um, us three, mm-hmm. me, H, and Sean. And we came from D&D and Pathfinder and stuff. Yep. So the complicated nature of that, mm. we, we were okay we were fine with. with. But then it was on the realisation, we were like, okay, this sucks. And also, fucking, um, what's the one for Bubblegum Crisis? Uh, uh, Fusion. Yeah, that was Fusion. Yeah, that's yeah, a good one. Yeah. Well, I, I quickly lost interest in that after I played it. Because yeah. <laughs> it was yeah, not yeah. very good. Mm. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, uh, the GURPS is, is a good game, though. But it I is. imagine it's, it's the type of game where if that's the only game you play, it's yep. perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But um, for me, it's like, it, it, it's too complicated to get back into for a single campaign. And so, but we had a lot of fun with it. It's a good mm. system. Yeah, I say, just, fortunately, we, we a, sat in the GURPS world for a long time. We did. So we, we spent a long time in Not that world. we exhausted a lot of what was to come because mm-hmm. you had a whole universe sort of uh, mapped out yeah. um, or universes. But we we sat in the GURPS world for so yeah, long that we've, right. we've. We got the money's worth out of it. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, so that's our answer. Mm-hmm. Um, what we will go to next is the follow. I'm stalling for time. God, there are so many. Right, I'm going to have to cut to some good ones. Banjo, he says, Is it true that Jeff Goad wears assless chaps while playing TCC RPG? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> because I only saw him from the waist up, sadly. <laughs> okay. um, but probably yes. Maybe. Um, he did sort of stand up and then you heard a clap without him moving his hands. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, uh, he was like, Colonel, I'm trying to sneak, but my ass is dummy thick. <laughs> this is a good one. Fair. He says, UK gamers... How do you get your hands on print copies of DCC books slash modules slash third party stuff, etc.? I've managed to get a few core book and annual, but there are some that just seem impossible to get without paying absurd delivery and shipping costs from the US of A. Mm. I'll tell you how, mate. You have to have uh, convince your mum to go and live in America, yeah. then get it delivered to her house, mm-hmm. and then when she visits, get bring them over. over with you. Yeah. Yep, that's the um, idea. My, uh, she bought me the Isle of Dread, yeah. right? The, uh, the new Goodman Games mm. version. And uh, it actually took over a weight limit on her bag because it's such a big bag. No, yeah. <laughs> Did she have to put something in her purse instead of you know, in a in a carry on? I think it was something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, that's yeah, wicked. I mean, that's the trouble with living in the UK with mm-hmm. Goodman Game stuff. It's probably the stuff I'm most likely to buy because I, yeah. I love all of it. And luckily, you can get copies of DCC because mm-hmm. I guess it's worth buying them in. But like. Yeah, I mean, you just have to be patient, oh, really. Well, even Leisure, though, Games, Leisure Games does have yeah. good... They often have a very good selection, yeah. actually. They've even um, got the dice in there. Mm-hmm. They, Yeah, Leisure Games is a website and shop from mm-hmm. London. So I'll if you're near the London that. area, it's, it's, it's reasonable. And um, 
Yeah, I, uh, the thing is as well, you've just got to sometimes resign to the fact that the, th- the specific thing you, you you want, you're probably not going to get. Yeah. And you just keep checking every so often. See what's on there, but see if you can pick one up. They often come up on eBay, I yeah, find. That's yeah, that's true. And yeah. they're from the US site. Because if you're just buying modules, those can be posted as a letter. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. it's all right. That's true. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I recently I got sent a fucking great package from uh, from a listener, Keith. Mm-hmm. He sent and he sent me a package for. He actually sent it to my mum and she bought it. Oh, here. nice! Yeah, but he, he included a bunch of third party DCC stuff Ooh. like um, uh, Bronx Beasts. So it's team Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for. Oh, nice! For oh, DCC, excellent. Uh, there was one that was a Mad Max uh, OSR thing that mm. Goodman Games made. He sent me Rat Snake, which is a dice uh, betting game uh, set in the Lankmar world, Wicked, yeah. which is fucking cool, and a set of uh, Gary Con 2017 dice. Now these were recreations of the original D and D dice, you know, mm. where they only had it was numbered one to ten twice yeah, yeah, on the D twenty. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm well fucking chuffed because that's, that's all right. the stuff I look at their website. and I'm like, I really want, I want that, <laughs> but paying thirty quid to get a zine posted to me no. is it worth it? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, fucking amazing. But yeah, with, with gaming in the UK, you just got to be patient. Yeah, also yeah. conventions, yeah, because yeah, yeah, we often good see good there. Goodman Games has been at uh, Dragon Meat a couple yeah, of times, right. as yeah. has Lamentations of the Flame Princess, like yeah. stuff that isn't native to England. So mm-hmm. yeah. So oh, and look at weird places. Harrison's picked up quite a good amount of stuff from Oxfam online and stuff. Oh, yeah. that's a point, yeah. And also, what was that other... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Is it the Fun Warehouse or something? We picked up a couple the of... The Fun Warehouse is where I lure children. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, the Magic Madhouse. That's the one. It's technically a Magic the Gathering store, but they do a small selection of RPG stuff. Mm-hmm. And I often see, like, say, for example, uh, Pathfinder for Savage Worlds, right? Mm-hmm. That's a new box set, very difficult to get. And uh, I found it on there. I was just like, well, that's weird. But the thing is, it's not the the go-to stop for RPG games. Just don't tell too many people about it. that's it. Um, We'll do two more questions. We'll try and keep it quick. Jason, he says, uh, why haven't you done any more of the mental health and RPG episodes? I found that very interesting. I know it was a while ago, but I've been catching up on the back catalogue. Well, I actually liked making that one, Mm -hmm. but I have, and you guys will know this, I have a very big problem being sincere about things and i got to be honest I listened to it back and I cringed oh, I was just like no. I don't like being serious I never do mm. so uh, it's a difficult one for, in general so we're yeah. just easy I, I did to, like it though and yeah. I feel like w- uh, there is a scientific fact that if you do suffer from these types of things mm. that hearing it from other people actually like physically makes you feel better right. because you because you feel less alone yeah. so I think sh- sharing all those experiences was really nice mm. But I just I just cringed on myself oh, too hard. Really? Oh no! What? She fell. The cat fell. The cat fell. Oh. Oh. Sorry, the 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 cat um <laughs> she fell. <laughs> she was asleep. All right. Um. Let's see. Uh. Right. Last last question. The Batman. Will the sequel to Don't be titled Please Don't or Shut Up Sean I'll Kill You in Real Life? <laughs> I like that. I like the Sean one. Yeah, I like the Sean one too. That's what it is. Okay, serious question. How would you handle us? No, we're not doing a serious one. Right, last one. What's the uh, from Lassie? He says, "What's the differentiator between a good GM and a mediocre one?" We all know what bad GMs are, mm. but what's a five out of ten? Ooh, a five out of ten is someone. Um, I'd say who who's, whose rules is written. Yeah, rules is written can keep a game flowing. Um, like, but, but, but what you're doing is no, no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say keep a game flowing, but someone uh, a mediocre GM is someone who can just continue along the path yeah. of the story. There That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also, I think a mediocre GM, one where you go, this isn't quite as hype and as fun as it could be. Yeah, it is somebody that doesn't have good game flow because mm-hmm. it's yeah. still fun. It's yeah. still good to be sitting there. But if they're piling par- par- through their rules for yeah. bloody ages, yeah. you get bored. Yeah, and I, I know that, like, on occasion mm-hmm. you've done it. On yeah. occasion, oh, I've I done yeah, it. Yeah. But the thing is, it's not like. It's not like a regular thing. No, and no. I'll, I'll say this, I'm not going to name any names, but we've played with a GM, you know, semi-recently, not in our regular group, Wink, who uh, will often have a 20-minute break for him to catch up. read. Yeah. All right. I don't, he doesn't listen to this, we'll be fine. But, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, like things mm. like that. But mm-hmm. he's not a mediocre GM, he's a very good one, yes. because luckily the other parts of the game make up for it. Yeah, the thing However, is, he's learned uh, a lot from his time with us, mm. as well as the previous um, experiences and all of our discussions. Yeah. But there's still... Um, I mean, the game I played at my local game store is a good example because mm -hmm. it would often be him every every hit. He'd be, okay, AC, there it is. Okay, you hit. Can you roll some damage? Right. And you see him note down, right, 16. And (laughs) all right, you're up next. And it was just like... So that's a mediocre one, yeah. Yeah, and mediocre is... The way I see it is kind of like... 
it's like the type of person it's just all mechanical yep, yeah you hit for six damage uh your turn right you hit for not five many damage. voices yeah yeah pcs yeah, do you know yeah. what i mean or none I think the uh, you know really good GMs, they're the ones that they control the room, mm-hmm. not the table, the room. Yes, yeah. Yeah, because there's a difference, isn't there? Mm-hmm. You can control the table and the people at the table, yeah. but you control the room, like this whole atmosphere, yeah, yeah. everything that's like happening. Controlling the room, like lighting, temperature. Well, as in, like, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, but just like control, controlling, like yes, the whole the atmosphere of everything, yeah. the vibe, yeah. the game, mm-hmm. the people at the table are saying, yes, please, you know, right, let's let's. In uh, fact, that's probably that the thing. single let's... most important thing. Yeah, is is control uh, getting a nice vibe, getting yeah. excited. By management, it, it, yeah, and vibe management, yeah, yeah, and understanding exactly when to be a hyperactive motherfucker, yeah, and um, when to tone it down. And a reading bit. your room, you know, if people are getting off, like getting off, <laughs> getting, you know, getting, <laughs> if really people are getting that, off, if they're getting off in your room, you're doing something. You got right. trouble. <laughs> you got a problem there. No, but if they're into something, let's say I don't know, uh, big fights and stuff, and, and 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 you know, a GM that picks up on that and then gives the people what they want. Uh, do you know what vibe management is? Is is is, is probably the biggest thing because. Mm. I've played with the GMs, you know, uh, that will flip through notes for a bit uh, mm. or uh, a momentary moment of confusion. But then it's like, but then it's, it's bringing it back from it. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it's people actually, I actually find I quite like it when you just go, right, talk amongst yourselves. So you get five minutes and then you just go, right, the sword comes swinging at you. You get right back. <laughs> and then you're just yeah. like, ah! I did it like in the cyberpunk yeah. campaign yeah. because I, I had my speaker behind me with music and I had random playlists of battle and ambient music and so I'd be like boom ambient right just need to look up this rule then about five minutes later I just go boom and then it puts yeah, on some heavy metal <laughs> yeah, song nice. and everyone's like yeah you get yeah I think I think that's about it yeah because yeah. if, so. if you're if you're boring that's that's the biggest difference between mm-hmm. a mediocre and a good mm-hmm. GM like oh you hit for five damage mm-hmm. very nice if people are looking at the clock for when the game's going to end, rather than going, shit, has that gone already? Four hours? Then that's when you know the difference, I guess. Yeah. I've never had that myself, because mm. a lot of the players are always looking at the clocks and not turning up and <laughs> yeah. calling me boring and saying, please stop. <laughs> and then running me over with their car. <laughs> <laughs> so annoying. I, he claims it was an accident, but I'm, I'm it's happened to seven times yeah, now. It's seven times, <laughs> ridiculous. You guys have got seven decks of many things at this point. <laughs> yeah. Well... Well, can, we, can we call that a podcast? Yes. I think we can, just about just ish. About. Yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Love you, bye. No, we're doing an outro, James. Oh. I need to wee-wee, so we keep this as a big outro. A small outro. <laughs> I meant big piss, small big outro. Piss. <laughs> That's going to be the title of the episode. <laughs> big piss, small outro. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, so uh, join the Discord, basically. All right, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Join Discord, uh, no. email us on our email, look yeah. us up on all the sites everywhere, yeah, so become a patron, do Actually, stuff. no, wait, do become a patron. Mm-hmm. Yes, please. And I'll t- I tell you why, because if you don't, Nick, mm-hmm. and now I think we can legally get away with this, cool. will hunt you down and kill you like a dog. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. 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 Yes, forestry speaking. Good. Disclaimer, he won't do that. No, I won't. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> yeah. But he maybe. Will. But what? It may be a minute from now. Maybe. It may be a year from now, but he will get you. He will get you. He's got, he's got a very set, specialist set of skills. I kidnapped Nick's daughter once. You should have seen how angry he was. <laughs> Good luck. Did you hear about that? Um, actually, it wasn't recent. This might have been about five years ago. Where uh, Who's the guy that's in those films, The Taken One? Liam oh, Neeson. Uh, Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. He went into a um, sandwich shop up north somewhere. He's like filming something. And uh, he was like, I will find my sandwich and I will eat it. <laughs> Apparently, like one of the staff asked him to say it and he did. Then he got the sandwich, and then he just left without eating it. Oh. I, I know there's more to the story than this, but I just remembered it, and I'm sorry. That was I, probably, probably, probably really stuff. vexed off that he had to do that to yeah. get a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't have it until you do it. Can I just pay you some money, please? <laughs> okay, do the line. I will have some bacon. <laughs> I will add tomato. <laughs> All right, well, that's a podcast. Uh, I've been Harrison Hunt. Oh, I've been Nick. I've been James. And remember that D20s are cool, but only if they're weighted. Lead <laughs> one. <laughs> See you later, everyone. Bye. Bye. Ouch. Good.
what you got to put in. Rap a school, keep the key in the ignition. When we get back, we will be shining and glistening. Your seven little thing with precision. We're tired for broke living. I'm trying to see a vision. Fuck it in my kitchen. So back the kids, they just give an info. We do a drive by and it's stolen black pinto. We tint the window. Pull us a fabric through your system. The man ran looking for him because we missed him. We catch him on the rebound. But see now, I'm trying to get this money in. Trying to stop me, what's it gonna be now? You stand up to my crew and get laid down On the ground with the big four pound You hear the sound on the upper side of town Where caps get pissed Break you off, love, love, give you something to fear Love respect, small deep, holding it down Run the fiction ass MC, Jean the Bell Eager to please rap kids, get back, smack the piss down Force the exile, left in the now When no keys out, select I bring it on again This for all my name I'm up in the pen, you how y'all been? I can't forget my who got left back F that and all my honeys chilling out and left back. Yeah, see, we get busy with no follow talk until you throw the talent and you'll have it roll the alum. Mount up, it's the infamous with the sewer. Blue the queens to get my weed for one ten. The guy blew a check one to her. Blue ya, out the box like Shelly. Coming from the under with the gun that like Shelly. Really? We come in deep just like the mom. Rhyming is my job, but you can wind up getting wrong. Anyway, in the day, a night it don't matter. It's me that <laughs> the P, have it in a jibber jabber. We bring him your roll without a doubt. It's the infamous and DOS effects. Here to turn the dial. Make the microphone master.